and welcome to Sewing Street. I'm Hannah. I'm normally producing. You're definitely expecting Vix. <laughs> um, but uh, Vix is away today. She's got sunstroke, I think. Well, she's not feeling great. And she's been, yeah, yeah. I'm, my director today is Kat, so she's talking in my ear. And um, she did say it's self-inflicted, but we feel for Vix. <laughs> and I hope she's better soon. Um, some of you will have seen me before and um, you'll know that I will probably talk to the director <laughs> who's in this room over here. Uh, but we're going to have some fun today because I'm not normally your... Oh, yeah! What's coming up today? Stash building bundles in the first hour. Then 9am we've got the lovely Janice and she's here live in the studio um, with a girl's skirt and blouse. Um, and then 10 a.m. we've got over lockers and dressmaking tools and then, <laughs> then we'll go into the repeat um, which would be John from yesterday um, doing thread doodling book launch um, and then a repeat of block of the week block 12. So that's what you've got today. You've got me and we'll have lots of fun so please do get in contact because it matters a lot anyway but today i need all the help i can get so there's uh, several ways to get in touch we've also we've got our email which today cat's going to be having a look at aren't you cat <laughs> which is studio studio at sewingstreet.com um and then we've also got our facebook yeah facebook might be the right way to do it because it's um we're on limited team anyway but it's very limited with me and cat here yeah, it's just just the girls team. It's the dream team. Kat, Hannah and Janice. Oh, uh, yeah, obviously the dream team if Kat is, Kat's here. Yeah, if Kat's here. No, um, how you buy, you go to our website, which is sewingstreet.com. Oh, Kat's getting that voice. Don't be scared if it says Jewelry Maker. They're our sister channel. So we're using their website because we're pretty new. Um, and then when you're on the website, you'll see the live feed of me. You can turn me off if you want. And then underneath, there's all the products from today's show. You can carry on scrolling. There's loads of things on there. And also, most importantly for us, I think, it's 1 p.m.p. all day. So it doesn't matter if you've checked out already on the early bird, which I'm going to come to in a second, and then come back later on in the day. You won't be charged twice, which I think is a massive benefit because... Especially during like lockdown, I've been doing a lot of internet shopping and you have a little browse later and then you're like, oh, I've forgotten that. And then I don't want to be charged that postage again. We don't do that here. Um, you can also contract us, contact us. I'm doing pointing and that's, that's difficult. Um, you can contact us uh, and the free phone number along the bottom of the screen. Customer service team based in the UK down the road in Redditch um, and they can help you out. Should we do early bird? Because I've done all my messages. I've done all my bits. Yes, we're going to have graphics in. Start with the early bird. Super popular early bird from before that we've had back in. So it's been so popular. So you're getting four half metres, they're all folded up, um, of your blues and your creams. Um, if you multi-buy these, these have already been pre-cut. Uh, so if you multi-buy them, they don't come joined up. But you are getting, I'm going to unfold them, Kat, I'm sorry. Uh, you do get a lot of fabric in your half metre. So I'm just going to show you here. So they are great. Obviously, if you're quilting, we haven't, it's not like you see, because it's a deal, we've not re replaced the quality wouldn't be the right word. But you think, because it's a deal, maybe they've got a certain fabric in, you know. Like when big short stores have a sale, sometimes they bring in, certain things just for that we don't it's our normal quality that you're going to see in the rest of the show but we just put a special price for people that are coming in early so this is your half meter so you're getting two meters overall saving you three pounds also always remember which i will repeat through the show so do message in if that gets annoying oh i got two messages um i was so impressed people are there watching me saturday morning um Every half metre is two fat quarters. So I do think if you have someone else that you know quilts uh, or someone else that does small projects like bag making and things, maybe buy it with them and then you can do it in half. 
or send someone a little gift in the post. I'm always about like little gifts that someone can then use. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I actually, so this first hour is about stash building and I, I'm going to name myself Queen of the Stash. I like that title. I'm sure everyone watching at home has got more stash than me, but I think I'm just obsessed with colours and patterns. And I have, I have old lockers in my house and each different thing is full of fabric. And I think I just like getting it out and ordering it and ironing it. It's the only thing I iron in my life. Um, but yeah, I think stash building, early bird, brilliant because you're getting money off. Oh yeah, this is my showing ability. Oh yeah, painting my nails this morning for telly. Right, so that for this first hour is your stash building, basically. So do go in contact, tell us about your stash, your workrooms at home, how much fabric do you have that you always just touched and never used because it's too special. Okay, hello Diane. Oh, good morning Diane. She said, good morning beautiful Hannah. That's so lovely, but... Oh, morning, Carol. Oh, that's so, that's so nice. Thank you for your support. Um, yeah, Carol's messaging. She said, it's lovely to see you, Hannah, on a dull morning. Oh, oh, Big Boss Haley's messaged in. This is where I'm off. Oh, Stash Queen. I name myself Stash Queen. Um... <laughs> I'm just, I mainly stash, not making. I think I just collect all the colours and then I make something and I'm like, oh, I need to refill the stash again. Um, right, I'm going to do the monochrome bundle that is um, three metres, six half metres. God, I, for, I forgot there where I was and just shut my eyes to think. <laughs> do you ever do that? You know, you're really concentrating and then I'm like, don't do that on telly, open your eyes. Right, so this is all one bundle. Monochromes are great. Oh, yeah, sorry, I made a tree. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, monochromes are great. Uh, whether you're doing blocks and you want to contrast that, or maybe you do like monochrome designs. There's a lot of them out there. Like I'm particularly interested in like contemporary kind of quilt design and things like that. And I'm always on Pinterest. Do follow us on there as well. Uh, we're Sewing Street TV. I don't know, I have to do like a TV voice, <laughs> you know, like follow us. Anyway, um, really great ideas, contrasting the bright colors, then you've always got background colors. Uh, again, if you're bag making, if you're making things, these could be linings. They're 100% cotton. Um, they are that quilting weight. So when we talk about that, that's that weave. Um, it's hard to describe. Um, because what we a pop lint is 100% cotton, but it is the way that the fabric's woven. So a pop lint, it feels lighter. And then, yeah, canvas can be 100% cotton. The one we sell is 100% cotton. And that, it's still made up of that raw ingredient, but it's just the way that fabric is woven. So when we say quilting weight, it's heavier than, it's not as heavy as a canvas and not as light as a poplin and then lighter than a poplin would be a lawn. So you get like a Liberty lawn, uh, which again, 100% cotton and it's just the way it's woven, how much you're getting in the warp and the weft, I suppose, which makes it up. I don't know if that was the best explanation, but just, just try and like, cause I know we say quilting weight cotton quite a lot. And if you don't do co quilting, you might be like, oh, I can't, yeah, I can't use it for other things. You can 100%. Like, I'm thinking bag linings, maybe go dark because, like me, you have some biro pens in your bag. <laughs> or my mum always says in a bag, a light lining because then you can find things. Well, my mum's a lot tidier than me. She'll like that. Last time I was on air, I said, oh, gosh, I look like my mother. And she called me afterwards and told me off. She was like, what's wrong with that? I was like, nothing, nothing, mum. Anyway, this... oh, lovely. We've got some more messages. This year monochrome bundle. I started with this because it is so useful, but it's also very low in stock. Cool. 
We've got some more messages. Oh, message from Genevieve. Morning. Oh, oh, she said it's like my, it's a big day. She was like, it's lovely to see you on our screens. Enjoy your day. Yeah, it's, a, it's fun. It's different. Today will go fast. A little bit out of the ordinary for me. Oh, is it Claire that makes things? Yes, I think that's Claire who makes things. She's in Solihull. Oh, oh yeah, Claire messaging. Claire, who makes things? Um, she lives Solihull way. That's weird that I know that, but she messages in and I'm normally upstairs if you've not seen me before. Normally I'm producing, so I get the little messages, get the down low. Yeah, she, oh yeah, we all wish Vix a speedy recovery. She caught the sun yesterday and is not feeling great today. No, it's not. Yes, Janice is on the next hour. Absolutely love Janice. Um, she's making this, I didn't refer to my lovely friend. Um, she's making this little child's outfit. So we'll see Janice. She's here in the studio, which is very excited. And yeah, I think if you've seen Janice before, let's get bets in of what colour hair. Obviously, non-profit bets. Yeah. Um, can I do this cream bundle? Thank you. Um, so you're getting in this two metres, four half metres of all your creams and whites. I'm not sure if on air they're all going to look quite similar, but it's all a very subtle difference. And again, as we're talking about stash building, those solid colours are great. So I haven't got, I haven't got any liberty here. I've got like half a pink cushion that was made. But if you say that, I have got tiny scrap. There's a new Liberty collection and how great these are tight. These are our charity bag scraps. So they are, these are scraps. <laughs> but I'm just thinking that new Liberty collection with your creams and even like that kind of more coffee color. Like I'm gonna go iced coffee. Um, that kind of making just one of those half meters with these lovely colors. It's gonna look great, innit? In it. I don't think I should say in it on air. I don't think I should say in it anyway. I'm nearly 30. I don't think that's a phrase. Oh yeah, I'm not nearly 30 if anyone's watching. Yeah, <laughs> any suitable bachelor, suitable bachelors. No, I've been told off by cat now. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, the cat's just saying there. Yeah, to see that kind of, it's a really subtle gradient. So even also, if you're focusing more on your quilting, even just using these three, yeah, I, I do really like that. And it's an unusual bundle. And do you know what? If you were, like we have our local, well, most of us have a local kind of fabric shop we go to as well, but their warehouse space isn't normally as big as ours. I'm talking in general, but we can then store more selections of those colours. So if you went to your local fabric store, they might have like two creams, whereas we can then have like this. That's not in there, but like another one. We have we have a larger warehouse. That's my hands. We have a larger warehouse that is available, like the space is available to us to really give that full selection. And these are always restocked and then on the website. So then you can keep keep the um, the code. There'll be a code on there or on the bag you get. Note that down a little. If you keep lots of people, keep a little like a like a sketchbook notebook and just then you'll know that's been a really good color. I'll reorder some more of that color. Cushion backs as well. Half a meter, two cushion backs of a kind of I'm going regular size cushion. Oh, Liam's messaged in. He's a producer on um, JM. Big, big producer. Oh, he's meant to be moving house. What's Liam saying? Oh, he said to me, never say in it. This, oh, I have to tell them what's going on. That's not, I'm not down with the kids, am I? No, so far from it. I need Liam to come in and produce me. Yeah. If he's got time to message in and assess, yeah, criticise my ability, then he can be here. Yeah. 
Yeah, he'll think he's amazing. Can I do the rainbow mixer bundle, please? Fan. Oh, thank you. Um, these are your half misses of your rainbow mixer, and you'll see that these are slightly different from the solids we've seen up to now um, because there is that kind of mottled effect. Obviously, it's a printed design. It's not like our batiks that are hand dyed. These are printed because I know some people love working with batiks, some people don't. But you are getting that kind of look with these, which I think is great. And also teaming these then with, with your patterned fabric and also like a solid. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pick up a random color. Uh, let's go there. Oh, I don't know why I did that. That was a terrible idea. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Right, so let's go purple. Even teaming that up with that, there's a lot of, I think, thinking about your patterns as well as your colors. I know I'm calling this a pattern, but thinking about the kind of patterns and prints as well as your solid colors is really important. Again, I'm talking about quilting in this, and but it's something in general. Think of how many books also talk about color theory and thinking of patterns. In quilting, you're thinking about the different size of patterns, where that like leads your eye to look at. Um, and it's nice not to have such a <laughs> idea. Cats, cats being like, Hannah, don't just shush. Um, but you don't, and it's also then not just a solid block color. There's a time and a place for that. The solid block colors, again, I love contemporary quilting. I love looking at that type of thing. And that looks amazing. Maybe you're doing a more intricate kind of quilt design on top of that. But also, I don't know, Stark's the wrong word, but you want, you want movement. And that always sounds a bit strange, but these are giving some movement to kind of your design. Um, but obviously this is a ray of colour, it's always really popular rainbow bundles and obviously we're seeing rainbows everywhere at the moment and maybe that's not your thing, you don't want to make a rainbow quilt, but think about the range of colours you've got in here and what this, you, uh, I organise my, my stash in colour order because I'm that person, um, but you take these separately and say you've got lots of purples. This just goes into your stash in the purple selection. This just goes into the blues. They don't, just because you're buying them as a bundle doesn't mean they have to be used together. But right, I'm gonna go to blue, the blue bundle next. It's a big blue bundle, if that's okay. Some of these colors were in your early bird, obviously, which is your creams and your blues, which is a great place to start if you've not shopped with us before. Obviously you're getting a discount, but this is a big bun blue bundle. We do big bundles of blue because blue is one of those universally very popular colors. Was it? Two and a half meters of blue yesterday for early birds. So if you got that, you're very lucky. I didn't get that. Um, but to have this array of blue, you know, calming colors, if you're making a gift for someone. It is just like normally in my job, I'm sat upstairs, I'm producing. If you've not seen me before, this is why, this is why they keep me upstairs, you've just realized. Um, but I'm normally seeing what people are buying, uh, when people are checking out on things, replying to messages, that type of thing. And blue is one of those, we show it and it goes. So to have this massive bundle and five meters of fabric, I think I'm not gonna unfold it all because it is just me and Kat today, but it, oh, oh, to have that much fabric, because if you, I'm gonna unfold one of them. I like, well, how many of these do we have available, Kat? Sorry, this is one half meter. Oh, I'll, I'll do it with another bundle, I think. I'm gonna open up all of the half meters in one of them because I think obviously we've got space limitations. You won't get a sticker on yours when the sticker comes off. Um, but I think it's good to put into context how big, like you're seeing one half meter, all of those are that big. So, and that's a lot of fabric. That's not something you're gonna, well, you could use in a hurry. But even if you're just being like, well, 
you know, $34.99. I've got a load of presents that I'm making, cushion for, like cushions. You could do a selection of, oh, I folded this terribly. Um, you could do a selection of blue cushions or just be like, oh, I'm going to, this is just going to be my cushion backs. I brought some Liberty and these are now going to be my selection of cushion back colours. They are, they're the quality for the front, but I'm just thinking like value wise, amazing. Ooh, oh, that's fantastic. Oh, lovely. Um, fantastic, monochrome sold out. I'm just gonna put this here. We do have another monochrome-esque bundle. I'm just gonna put that here because that's sold out. Um, Kat's just letting me know because she's doing multiple jobs today. Um, that lots of people doing the right thing. They're looking ahead on the website, probably turning the sound off on me, um, and then checking out on the colorways that they're really interested in, looking out for what's on there, what's new. Eh, that's, that's what I like to hear. I'm gonna go pink, because it's beautiful, feminine, and as I said this morning, today I'm a lady, because so I've painted my nails, and Kat laughed at me. Um, so, that was, that was supportive in my hour of need. Um, I'm just gonna... <laughs> yeah! Cat's, cat's so supportive. Right, so you're getting all of these in the bundle. What I just started to do then was, I think, just trying to think about the value in these. Um, because if you think, right, so... Well, it's not even how many projects because you're getting a lot in those half meters, but you could, you've got that more pastel colorways, your bright, vibrant kind of fuchsias, and then them kind of like kind of, I was gonna say plums, but I mean like kind of berry tones. And just not even, I think there is a, a lot like, well, I've got a pink bundle, I need to do, I need to do a Bargello with it. I need to do something that uses it all. And Bargellos are beautiful, and I'm not saying like, Oh, well, they're not there anymore. In Debbie's new book, she has a Bargello pillow, and that would look lovely in that. But equally, there isn't the pressure of using them together. Like, I just think the value in them is really good. And again, we have the space to stock more selection than most places. So there you go. Oh, it's half past. If you're watching today for the first time, I'm not normally your presenter, don't worry. Um, I'm normally producing, so I'm upstairs, people don't see me. Vix is meant to be in, but um, she's a bit poorly. So, an hour of need. I'm obviously the last option here. <laughs> so, I'll have a normal presenter normally. I'm gonna go to the pastel bundle if that's okay. Can we just look at the bundle for a second? I'm just gonna lay it out. There we go. I, don't, I laid it out funny. Yeah, that's fine. Kat's just asking me if I'm okay with it being on the overhead. Just feel very, um, very aware of my lockdown belly. <laughs> and no one knew. <laughs> oh no, there's a lockdown belly. Oh, that was so supportive. Liam, uh, Liam producer at JM says you're doing very well. I don't, I'm not, um, I'm just pretending this isn't on telly. Really, I'm not. Oh, Carol's messaged in. Oh, actually. Oh, Carol, you've read my mind. Good luck with that, because I don't know what's going on most of the time. Oh, I'm not very good at getting the bookcase without showing my back. Um, Carol's just messaged in to say the bundles will be great with the gemology book that we launched the other day. And you are exactly right. I'm going to do the book first, actually. I'll come back to this bundle. Um, can we do this on the overhead? Oh, this is a test for me. I now, now I know how, I've said this before, but when you're watching, you're like, oh, I'm presenting, like nerve wracking, but things like opening the book are difficult. <laughs> oh, back. To me, that's forward. Right, so this is a brand, <laughs> this was a brand new book launch the other day with John. He actually did a great show where he showed uh, the foundation paper piecing of some of the blocks. Um, so it is all foundation paper piecing and it is stunning. Um, 
if you've not done some foundation paper piecing before, there is, it does simplify some of them. They're all, they're not all massive cushion, cushions. They're not all massive quilts. There is opportunity to do smaller projects. So um, just talking the introduction about gemology a little bit. So, and meanings of gemstones. So I think we had a lady who messaged in the other day and she sent, she's worked from this book and she'd done, I think, Sorry if I get it wrong. No, no, okay, it's fine. Um, she'd made a quilt, I think, for her daughter and her uh, grandson or granddaughter. That way round. Sorry if I've got that wrong. Um, oh, yeah, I did name the side gems. So this was the lady's um, cushion or quilt that she sent in. Cushion. And she thought about the um, birthstones there. So obviously John was in. <laughs> Hi, John. I think you might... Um, I thought you might like to see the cu this cushion I made for my daughter-in-law's birthday. She has a February birthday and so does my, as does my grandson, hence the amethyst gems. And my son has a September birthday, so sapphire was needed as well. The other, sorry, I am having to read round a camera. The other picture is an, the aquamarine gemstone cushion. I love making these and there are lots more in the pipeline. Take care, Carol, a.k.a. Granny Carol. So I think talking about those meanings of gemstones, uh, yeah, birthstones, wedding anniversary quilts, maybe. Um, again, talking about um, colour and obviously that goes into facets as well. So get this 3D effect. Uh, the cut of a gemstone is facets, basically. I don't know what this is illustrating. But where they cut a gemstone, they cut it to show the light. Um, so when you're doing your foundation paper piecing, foundation paper piecing allows you to have more accuracy. I can never say that word. Don't know why I chose to use it, because I know I can't say it. Accuracy. To be more accurate? Accurate. Nah, you get what I mean. I'm just, I'm going to move on. You get what I mean. Um, it allows you to, yeah, to do more detailed work and you'll need that to create those 3D effects. So it talks about then doing your different backgrounds and the effects that's going to have, making your colours pop. So we haven't gone to foundation paper piecing, so it's talking about your tools, how you do it. That's a really good broken down um, demonstration of that foundation paper foundation paper piecing method. Um, we have add a quarter rulers that they talk about. We have those on the website. Um, also there's John's demo. All of our shows go onto YouTube afterwards. And I think that's a really great resource that you have access to that at any time. Um, so if you then get this book and you think, actually, I'd really like to watch John doing it before I start out. Or if you today when Janice is on, watch her and then buy the bundle and think, oh, I, I'm, you know, when I get my bundle, I'd like to watch it back with Janice, with Janice. Yeah, have her in your workroom as well, like just picking up tips and tricks. Um, so then it starts to break down how you're doing your fabric. Actually, really usefully, they have a birthstone chart. So if you are making a gift or things like that. Oh, what's... So you've got all the cuts as well. Again, foundation paper piecing. I love the heart one. So maybe with the heart one, you could do a, a wedding gift. Um, sapphire was the original engagement ring as well. So you could do a blue sapphire, like heart cut cushion for someone's like soon to be missus. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Kat's saying that kind of neutral colors, the whites and the creams, might work. You'd have to check your beginning of the book though, I think. Or even in the pinks, that would look amazing. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna flick through. So you've got all your cuts. They've basically broken it down into cuts of gemstones. I don't know if anyone uh, went to Festival of Quilts a couple of years ago, but there was absolutely amazing, massive foundation paper pieced diamond quilt. And it filled the, it was in its own little booth. If you've been like, you can, well, obviously it's, it's not on this year, but when it's all back to normal, um, there is stalls selling things, which is amazing. We're, we'll be there. And then um, 
there are booths with different quilts that have won competitions, different sections. There's a there's like a junior section. Uh, there's like group projects, things like that. And there was an amazing quilt. I mean, it was a massive, just all foundation paper piece, massive gemstone. So I don't know whether this lady's produced this book off the back of seeing that kind of thing, but there's definitely, it's definitely a very stunning kind of optical illusion because you're thinking about that kind of light and everything. Um, I'll just carry on flicking through very quickly. You've got your marquees. Nice. And then you also have got started to think about projects with them. So gemstone purse. Maybe even you don't use it as a purse going out, but you use it as a bag to keep your keepsakes in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cat's great idea. Um, don't, going down the aisle with wedding rings. So maybe the stone of your engagement ring carrying those rings. Or even, oh, there might be a little one, or a, not in a, to a purse, but a small ring cushion. Yeah, Kat also went to the dog's collar idea. I don't know, I don't know if I would put important, expensive wedding rings on the dog's collar. I think I would lose the dog. Um, yeah. So it isn't just quilts, it's thinking about using them into like a bag design, a uh, statement piece. Obviously that one's... Kind of looks like a deconstructed kind of ring design, doesn't it? With the um, ones at the side. Uh, love these, like they've all been scattered. Like, yeah, I was gonna say like treasure. Oh, I don't know, I've renamed it the treasure quilt. Like I've named myself, oh, it's called treasure chest. I didn't name it. I thought I'd had that kind of moment there. I was like, I'm so great at this. Um, I think they're amazing. Also, as well, each of these could just be blocks of fronts of cushions. Um, and it's something that is going to take time. So I do think if it's going to be a gift as well, that might be quite... It's that process, like, of, I don't know, gifting and, like, putting your heart and soul into it. I think people in quilting communities and craft communities are very... It is all about that community and spreading the love. I'm going to say spreading the love. Oh, we've had some more messages. Thank you so much for getting in touch because I am not normally the presenter, as you might be able to tell. Who's messaged in, Kat? Oh, message from Pat. Hi, Pat. Oh, lovely to see. Oh, oh, Pat's, <laughs> Pat's messaged in saying, is it a regular spot? No. Oh, thank you so much, Pat, but no. Oh, Dawn's messaged in. Morning, Dawn. It is a surprise for us all, Dawn, isn't it? <laughs> I know, I didn't know it was gonna rain. I also don't know how like show appropriate this dress is, but I know it will get bigger by the end of the day. Yeah, we're sending all our love to Vix. Uh, Vix, it, oh. Thanks, Kat. We just text her. Um, she's not um, feeling great today. She caught the sun yesterday. So um, that's why you've got me. I'm normally producing, normally upstairs. I'm not a natural at the presenting. Oh, no. Um, in the back of here, also very important, you've got all your templates for your foundation paper piecing. They are the correct size. There is also details on how to scale these up and down as well if you are at that point of your journey because you've got your test squares as well oh nice fantastic so you've got all of these here scale them up and down you also have that test square um whether you trace your uh pattern pieces you're going to use or most people generally are going to use a photocopier um, if you've not done foundation paper piecing before, it has paper on the back and that's how you build up your design. Um, we also sell the Carol Dokes foundation paper piecing paper. Um, I would recommend it because it is that bit um, thin as the wrong word. Um, it's kind of like an old kind of sugar 
sugar paper is the wrong word. Like, it's something that I used to use at school that's very similar. But anyway, it's easier to rip, uh, which normally you wouldn't want from a paper. But because you need to then, when you're completely done, remove your papers, and then most people, I think, would advise right at the end of your project because you don't want to then have taken your papers out and that be more malleable while you're attaching the next section. So right at the end of the project, you need to take your papers out and you need to take them out without distorting the stitching. So that paper is really perfect for it. That's what it's developed for. Um, so yeah, um, Carol Doak paper on the website. I think we've still got some in stock. I was just, just doing a little point off as if it was round there in the rest of my shop. Pretending to be shopkeeper. Right, how long have I got, Kat? 20 minutes, right, I'm gonna whiz through these bundles. I know loads of you have been on the website and already started checking out, pardon me, um, checking out on which ones you want, what projects you've got in mind. I'm gonna do the red bundle next. Um, I really like this bundle. Um, if you watch the show, you'll know I have a small obsession with orange at the moment. I seem to have painted lots of things in my house orange. I actually dyed some cushions in my house orange and then Googled it and found out that that had a meaning of um, you miss social, cra yeah, craving social interaction. So maybe my lockdown colour has been orange and I may regret this all afterwards. But I'm loving it at the moment. It's like kind of like, I like the burnt kind of orange. Like, I think it's very warming. I think, I always think like nice, well, we don't need warming at the moment. It's warm like the sun yesterday, but um, warming and like kind of, you know, like traditionally uh, a log cabin block, the center square was red and that was the heart of the home. So coming home to that, and I always do think like at quilts you cozy up. Do you know what I mean? So I think these kind of warm colors are perfect for that. Also, they're kind of quite rich berry colours as well, which I think are lovely. Like, um, I am going to say Christmas, but I'm thinking Christmas, Holly and Ivy. But then I'm also thinking summer holiday. So wherever you're, maybe you started your Christmas projects, you're a lot more organised than me. But I think if you've got the time, don't make Christmas a rush. I think by the time we get to Christmas, we'll want to spend, uh, if we can, as much time as we can with family because, you know, this year's been a bit of a nightmare for obvious reasons. Um, I'm going to do the green bundle because I'm already talking about Christmas. This is the bundle we had on yes yesterday. Totally not yesterday. The, the other day with Vix. And I was in as well. Um, and we did a little, this is my trees, which, you know, I was very proud of. Um, Vix showed us how to cut these strips. She did two and a half inch strips using the stripology. But actually, with this kind of project idea, you can use any width of strip. So if you and it's just going to make your tree smaller. Um, so obviously, I think Christmas when I see this type of tree, but also you could do like just a pine forest and then applique bears on. I was into that. Um, I've used this kind of bluey green as that background colour that you're getting in the bundle, which you could just do a cushion front and back in that and you'd have enough and then do like these, we've cut these then using the 60 degree triangle, um, just always making sure that baseline's bigger. So the strips just get bigger and bigger, but I think it's really effective. And we were talking about appliqueing that on, using like a satin stitch around the outside, maybe in a slightly different green tone, or if you could match the green tone to make it look a little bit like a kind of furry tree. Um, I think that'd be really effective. Also, if you are, a little bit more advanced in your patchwork or you don't like a plique, which is fine. That made it sound very aggressive. No, obviously that's fine. <laughs> Not everyone likes a plique, apparently I do. <laughs> um, you can then, you can also then um, patch all of this. So you would just cut strips, your two and a half strip, or, well, any size strip, whatever size strip you're using, you would also cut from your background fabric. We didn't do that as well because you get the look and we didn't know what final measurements. So you would just then kind of piece that along there. Um, I was actually looking at projects like this on Pinterest before we did it. So there is lots of help on there. I think 
nice. So you could do them, you can mix it up. I also thought accessorizing with little buttons, uh, free motion embroidery. There's some very talented people out there and you could do little robins. I also really like the idea, oh, I'm not gonna do it because I don't have enough space, but um, I live in a very old, well, it is a very old house. It's over a hundred years old. And um, I have a small draft issue. Um, I was thinking um, a draft excluder going along with smaller trees on them and all accessorized with little bells. I was gonna go with bells because yes, if anyone's opening my front door, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave at the back. <laughs> it gives me that little heads up if the bells tell me. I wouldn't use it as your only security system though. <laughs> so this is your bundle. Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I was into the trees. Um, I'm gonna clear that up now. Um, should I do that pastel bundle that I got out but didn't speak about? So this is your pastel bundle. If we can have just a look at that, I'm gonna get some books if that's okay. Nice, I've laid it out like a, a deck of cards. A <laughs> deck of cards. <laughs> yeah, I will not be asked to work in Vegas. This is how I'd laid out the deck of cards. Um, I, although we're selling fat court, no, although we're, there's, there's actually pins inside the book. Just thought you should know. Nice. Um, obviously this is a fat quarter book. We're selling half meters, not a problem at all because half of a half meter is a fat quarter. So I just thought we'd look at this um, 25 vintage projects book and kind of refer back to the thing. I'm gonna open up the book. Is that in the right place for you, Kat? Okay, um, lovely Susie Johns, we've seen her here. Oh, that's so cute. Um, oh yeah, I'll move it across. I'm new to the presenting malarkey here. Um, so we had the lovely Susie Johns here and these are kind of your vintage, vintage designs. But I particularly picked this pastel bundle because there are those kind of baby quilt designs in here as well. So it covers all your basic techniques, which is great. You, you know, may be coming back to sewing. We have a lot of people messaging that are returning to sewing um, from, you know, life. Do you know what I mean? Or wanting to get back into a hobby or have got back into it through it being locked down or just loads of things. I think sewing is, sewing and craft are everywhere at the moment. There's lots of programs about them. Obviously we're here. Um, and I think it's great. I think people yeah, are using it as, you know, a form of relaxation as well. I think obviously it's got a very industrial history and this is, we're kind of thinking of it in a more mindful kind of way and enjoying that process of making something. And it is a great feeling to have made something and someone to ask if it's dressmaking, like what a lovely outfit and you can go, well, where did you get it? I made it. Like, I don't like, I think that's a really nice moment and um, to be able to say, and that sense of achievement, I just think is great. So if you are returning to it, it's got little techniques or if you're starting out, and these are really good because you might read something in the book and need to refer back to it. There's also your embroidery techniques, which you can, all of these things are transferable skills. Um, so it goes into time periods. I like this, it's like a Liberty print. Um, so you've got your like needle case, really great place to start. Maybe a gift for someone that you know is starting sewing. And there's some upcycling in here. Like you wouldn't have to, but they've used like an old doily which, you know, you might have some in the loft or seen them in a charity shop, think that is beautiful kind of work on those kind of doilies, the embroidery, and think, I know I'm not gonna use it as a doily because that doesn't fit in with my decor, but it's a nice way of upcycling and still, you know, seeing the beauty in that. Uh, pin cushions, I love these ideas of putting them in teacups. We've had designers come in and I'm just like, that's so cute. And they've used some Liberty fabric there, obviously fitting with that 30s era, but ignore the print, it could be any. You could use spots or stars, whatever fits for you. Um, tray, cloth, tray cloth, tray cloth. Um, obviously lining trays and things on a dressing table, that'd be great. Embroidered cushion, that is lovely. And there will be templates, if I'm correct. I've, 
um, at the back of the book for these kind of designs. So you could just take an element of the house or the lady and things like that if you felt a little overwhelmed by the whole design. But it's nice to have that kind of sit down. I think hand stitching as well, very therapeutic. So they talk about that in there. Um, love the idea of pyjama case. I don't, I wish I could be that person that has their pyjamas in a pyjama case. And how gorgeous is that? Um, talking about also embroidering that full design on the front. Gorgeous. Uh, 40s, flower brooch, little accessories, maybe, yeah, maybe gift ideas as well. Uh, sprucing up if, uh, oh God, I don't want to talk about autumn. Getting your awesome coat out, just spruce it up with some little brooches. Sewing machine cover, you know, you know, the chances are you probably have a sewing machine if you're watching Sewing Street or you're thinking of getting one. And a lot of us don't have a space for a full workroom. So if you are, if it is in the house, you want it to look nice or even in your workroom, you need to cover it up. Keeping the dust out of there is going to make your life easier. Mm. Um, coat hanger cover. Oh, brilliant. Coat hanger cover. I, I don't understand what that one is, so I'm going to move on. Um, <laughs> peg bag. I've been hanging my washing outside. Don't actually have a peg bag, just a pile of pegs. So I need that. Um, thinking about your pastel bundle, maybe your, your, your stars as well. Patchwork co cot quilt. So this could be your first ever uh, patchwork quilt because they're using a very easy technique. They're just literally the plain squares. Also, really good technique. Maybe you've got fabrics that you want to upcycle from uh, other clothes and things like that. Obviously, be aware that they're normally different weights, but you could use a stabilizer on the back. But you are working with squares, so there's no bias, which is the kind of stretch when it's cut on the diagonal. So it's quite a good one to start with maybe doing a memory quilt. Table runner. Protect your dining room table. They're not cheap, are they? Um, and nice, you know, spruce up the room. You know, you've got people coming over. You know, we can't always hang out bunting if you're coming over for a cup of tea. Seems a little excessive. But just a nice little, we made an effort. Nice cup of tea. Tea cosy. Apron. Oh, sorry. Cat's just told me. Someone on the fan page has messaged in to say, what's her name? Tammy. She wants my nail varnish. I, please don't look at it close. I painted my nails in the car. And um, it's not the best job, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very... Oh, Denise. Oh, I love the compliments. This is making me feel great. Not when I got the call, it didn't. Um, hot water bottle cover. This, I'm not sure if this boy looks happy or sad here. Like, yes, very hot weather, cold water in a hot water bottle. I read that as well. I haven't tried it. I considered doing it yesterday, but I was like, I do not know where the hot water bottle is in June. Um, yeah, you, you probably would look happier than this boy to have a gift of a hot water bottle cover. No, he's very much forced to be there. Or maybe he's acting. They've gone, you've got a tummy ache. You've got a tummy ache, Timmy. Oh, Timmy, you've got a tummy ache. This is your last job. You're not getting that job again. But great gift idea. <laughs> Cute little dress. We've got dressmaking for kids coming up with Janice after this. So um, don't, don't look at her. <laughs> don't, you won't want that. You'll want this. You'll want Janice. Applique cushion. I'm going a bit rogue right at the end. I was so sensible up to now. Um, this really great laying up the flower design. So I'm thinking if you're using the bundles, it would look beautiful. Love a bit of pom-pom rickrack as well. <gasps> Baby bibs. I think that's a really nice gift because uh, I, my friend recently, I'm saying recently, babies grow really quick, don't they? Gosh, they do grow quick. Recently, probably like a year ago now, my friend had a baby. Um, and I think baby showers as well. You want to get something sentimental, but you also want to get something useful. Like having a baby isn't cheap, is it? And 
Yeah. Yeah, and like if someone else has gone, because, you know, we generally look at the same kind of shops for things, don't we? So I wanted to get, I did like a hamper where I put in, I made up hamper, where I put in like um, baby wipes, um, baby wipes. What else did I put in there? Like she's doing all, yeah, eco-friendly nappy type things because she's into that. I don't know how long that lasted. Um, I <laughs> just imagine it'd be very stressful. Um, and then I also put like books in there and those kind of cutesy things as well. But I was trying to think, I want it to be, you know, individual from me, but also something they're going to use. And I think bibs and things like that. I'm not sure how I feel about embroidering onto a bib because... No, I know, but like... I just don't think that's very practical. That's like a photo bib with embroidery. They're just going to spill everything down it. <laughs> um, notebook cover, um, really cute, using up scraps as well. I think that's a really great idea. Zhuzhing up, zhuzhing up. I'm going to say zhuzh. I'm doing a little zhuzh dance as well. Oh, zhuzh. Um, Making a little thoughtful gift, I think, as well. If someone really likes gardening or you really like gardening, doing a gardening notebook, writing down when, what you planted where um, and when and, like, then keeping, not even a notebook as well, keeping track of, like, seeds that you've got and things like that. It sounds very, like, over the top, but, oh, yeah, Kat's saying, she's making fun of me. She's saying, you're a gardener now. I just have a few pot plants that I've had this strange obsession with in lockdown where I have a yard that's probably as big as this table and it is just full. Um, so I, I've gone I've gone a little bit plant crazy in lockdown. Um, and I love Monty Don, new obsession. Good old Monty. If if you're watching Monty Don, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> He's a lot older. Anyway... <laughs> I like his house and his life, just to clarify, Monty, if you are watching. No, no. Um, memo board. My mum made one of these using a little sausage dog fabric for the kitchen. 70s. If 70s isn't your thing, use different fabric. Don't be specified. Yet yeah, the pastel bundle, which is where I started before I went off onto a tangent, invited, you know, Monty John to hit me up. Hit me up. Can you say that? Obviously calling. <laughs> oh, no, it's coming rogue. I've, I've gone relaxed and that's where it goes wrong. <laughs> I um, love the little owls. I know lots of people collect little owls. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's happy because he's got cakes. He's not been. He's been told to act happy. The boy. Um, don't worry, everyone, I will be gone soon. <laughs> Janice is on next and she's here in the studio with her, um, with her, yeah, I will leave, obviously, um, with her um, bundles to do kids' dressmaking, which is lovely. Shopping bag, all really useful, all your full-size templates. Oh, look, the whole gang at the back. Well, that's cute. Obviously, it is, they're talking about different projects. Uh, vintage projects and different time periods, but lots of that is fabric led like the 30s ones in there They're just definitely using just Liberty 30s print but That doesn't mean the project if you're not into vintage you're not into vintage But you the project ideas are great uh, Right, should I just do this big bundle? Do you have the graphics for this one? Okay. Um, I started with the monochrome bundle and that sold out really quickly. This is kind of I'm gonna call it the deluxe okay, I'm doing that kind of um you know, like a car salesman voice. Deluxe mega bundle of... I don't know where I'm going with it. Uh, there is two, four, six, eight, ten... Yeah, five and a half metres overall. Um, cream to grey. So, obviously, you're getting your monochromes in there, but there's also more of your kind of coffee tones um, and your browns as well. And... Um, I'm going to start and begin this hour on a monochrome bundle. Obviously, all the others are on the web, but this it is your go-to, isn't it? Whether you use it all together, which is what I've said about all the bundles, whether you use them all together or separately, really great value.
because this is going to keep you going whether these are your background colors you then do your gemology kind of foundation paper piecing onto or whether you're doing your smaller makes at home pardon cat yes i've just had to do left and right with my hands that's right oh left and right is really difficult isn't it um whether you're using it as backgrounds linings um, whether you're doing the smaller projects you've seen in the fat quarter um, I think maybe yeah backings and I, I feel really bad saying backings with these fabrics because they are amazing quality but I instantly see a pattern and I think oh that's the front but um, no like I think this is a staple if you haven't managed to get the other one and this is your kind of yeah, like price range that you're looking at or you've got a lot of projects on the go and you think I want to make my special pattern fabric go further. This is the way to do it. Um, we're going to go to a quick break, I think, now. So um, you will see me again. I'm so sorry about that um, in, in a few minutes. Um, and I will introduce the bundles that we're going to have the lovely Janice then come into the studio um, and do kids dressmaking. So that'd be a brilliant hour. I'm going to see you after this break. Get a cup of tea. Bye. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did.
My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual. Always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the same with her. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter. But I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Hi, welcome back. Wasn't that an absolutely lovely Meet the Designer with Janice? You will see her in a second, don't worry, you've not got me again. But that was a lovely introduction to Janice and she's going to be doing dressmaking with you this morning. We're going to be doing kids dressmaking, which Janice knows all about. I can see her just there <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> I know Janice very well. We've got two bundles for you, uh, which include your uh, fabric and your pattern to the, the kids' designs. Um, can we get the graphics in for the one with the stars on? That's OK. So you're getting two fabrics in your bundle. You OK, Kat? OK, cool. You get two fabrics. So you've got your stars and then you've got your spots as well. And then you've got your new look pattern, um, which is kind of a traditional dressmaking pattern with your different size ranges. I am going to, well, I'm not going to read all of them. Um, I'm going to check if they photograph the back. I didn't do it this morning. Uh, there's toddler and child. So can we do Let's get a shot of the back of the packet as well? That's fine. This is just for the pattern, the graphics here. And we're just going to show the back of the packet. That's OK. Um, so you've obviously got your size variations there, but um, Janice will talk a bit about what size that she's making today for us. That's the pattern on its own. And it isn't just for these, this like one item either. You've got your two items there, A and B. Fantastic. Um, stars. So that was the pattern on its own, but it is also included in the bundle. So you're getting two and a half meters of fabric. So your stars and your spots there, which is the colorway Janice is working in today. Um, I'm then going to go to the color that this sample is beautifully made up in here. So you've got, um, again, your pattern. Ooh. Do message in if you have any questions regarding the pattern, because I'm going to go off when Janice is here. Obviously, we're safely social distancing. Yeah, of course. Um, going to do um, social distancing. So I'll also get on and look at your messages through this and see if I can help and answer any of them. So you get your full pattern. I'm loving these kids' glasses. I had a pair very similar as a child. I normally wear glasses and I used to have, no one needs to know this, but they've just reminded me, massive glasses with like right behind my ear, like tied on with a bit of metal so I didn't take them <laughs> off. Oh, I was uh, normally with an eye patch underneath and this like wild hair. Oh yeah, avoided. Um, so then again, you've got your two and a half metres of fabric. So you've got your orange here where Janice has used that for the kind of like skirt. What would you call this little outfit? Kind of your, um, your skirt, little dungaree skirt. 
Yeah, I'm cool like that. Yeah. And then you've got your spots there for your blouse. I love all the detailing on the blouse as well, the little pin tucks and the little bow. It's really adorable. Um, fantastic. So, oh, we catch just let me know. We've got the wrong graphics. Of course, I'm just going to blame her. It's not me today. Um, so should we just do run through that one more time just to clarify? And I will um, not talk about my glasses. Orange coming in, you get your pattern, you get your fabric. That is the orange one, so just so you know if you're checking out. And then you've got your pink stars and you've got your spots, including your pattern. These things happen. There's a lot going on today. We're all very excited to meet Janice. Um, Janice will be using buttons and tools in her demo. They're all underneath on the web. And anything that needs recapping, you'll see me at the, get, at the end of the demo to do your recapping. Um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to go to a little VT of how to shop and how to buy if you haven't before. We're going to have a little disinfect of the desk and then we're going to get lovely Janice on to demo the kids outfit. Ooh. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel jewellery makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello everybody and I'm back with a vengeance. So good morning everybody, been missing your loads and we're here to show how to make this beautiful skirt and not the top but we're making the skirt and it's got lovely buttons on the uh, pockets on the side as well. So um, I'm going to start by showing you a few tips on the skirt. So interfacing. As you know, when you cut out the actual pattern, you'll be do doing the interfacing on the actual front of the skirt, where the pockets and that are going to go. You'll be doing it on one part of the waistband and on the straps, the shoulder straps, just to have, add that bit of weight. And that's why you do it, to add that bit of weight and make them a bit stronger. So what I've done, I've also made half of the skirt up already because there's all gathers in the skirt and that's the way it's starting to look. And I've also done the buttonholes down the side there to try and just get a bit in front of ourselves. So if I just pop that away for now. And the first thing you do is the pockets and this is the front, one of the front sides of the skirt, and that's where the pocket is machined on. Now I've actually machined the pocket on, on the one side, because you, you cut the pocket out four times, because you have, you have to understitch. Now to understitch, you turn it over, and you understitch, you have the pocket out, and you understitch just on the outside of the seam, so that when you actually are going to fold the pocket in, there's a bit of weight to hold the pocket down. So if you look there, you can see the actual stitching there. I don't know if the camera can get that shot there. But if you look, there's stitching there just to hold the camera down, to hold the pocket down, should I say, not the camera. <laughs> OK, I don't know whether I can get in on that. That's it. So that stitching just weights and holds the pocket down, that's why you do it. And that's why you do that part. So the first thing I'm going to do is, oh, and by the way, I've also 
on these children's skirts, I've also actually used pinking shears rather than an overlocker, okay? Also for quickness, because pinking shears is like, psh, and it's done. Nice. So, like I say, I've done half the skirt. So what I'm going to do is going to open this out and we're going to attach the pockets together, okay? God, I'm, I'm a little shaky and I don't know why. <laughs> it's crazy why I'm so shaky. Because I don't feel nervous yet. It's, it's weird why I'm shaking so much. So all we do is pin the pockets and we do the notches. And we're just going to machine round. And on this pattern, it's three eight seams. Now, this the ages I've done is for an age four. Um, but it does go up to quite, I think it goes up to age eight. So, so with the pockets, just pin in the pockets. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to, we have to match the seams up. So we put a pin in just to make sure that the seams are exactly lined up from one into the other seam. There's a seam there, look. Just to make sure they're lined up properly. And then I'm going to machine down the top, because you've got your notches. And we're going to machine down there, 3 8 in. And then we're going to machine down the pockets all around the outside, up to there, and then down to the other side of the skirt, to complete the other side of the skirt. So if I do use that as well, use a window clip to hold it. And that's it, just pin that bit of waistband out of the way that I've done just to hold it in. Gosh, I'm shaky. <laughs> but I haven't been on TV for some time now, so it's... <laughs> right, so here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to machine down just from to the notch first. That is marked. And what happens, you do, you actually do your, or you t before you, before you start, um, once you've cut the pattern out, always do all your notches. I, I would do the notches and everything at the same time. As soon as you cut the pattern out, it'll be easier rather than you having to keep stopping to do your markings and everything. So all we're doing now is just moving down, sewing down to that notch. And then let that go. Oops. Oops, I'm caught on the back. Cut it. I haven't used this machine either for 12 months, so <laughs> it's all a bit new again. So, and then we're just going to machine round the pocket. But also, what I need to stress to you is, you need to, when you're machining, you, you go round your three eighths, but then you do go off here, because you need to go up to the notch. So if you know what I'm saying, you're going to go lovely round three eighths, and then all of a sudden, you're probably going to go to like an inch or something because you need to do that shaping. Now, if you're novice, if you're new to this, tailor, do a basting stitch round to follow the line round. Just if you want to be a bit more perfect. I'm just going to do it freehand. But again, I, I can stress if, if you go wrong with your stitching, it's a devil to undo. So you really, really want to. Um, Tuck it round. <laughs> so I'm just going to do now the three eighths here. And don't forget, always do a reverse stitch at the beginning and ending of the stitching because you don't want to your stitching to come undone. So that's, there's nothing worse. So we're just machining round the pockets, the three eighths. And take the pins out as we go. So I'm just going nicely round the pocket, all the way round. And this is where the pinking shears are coming, because then we'll just trim it round. Because to be honest, to trim round pockets, or to overlock, should I say, round a pocket, it's tricky, because you can't get into the corner. 
Um, so you just need to, you just need the pinking shears. That's where the pinking shears is good. And what I always say as well is it's always, I like to have the inside finish as nice as the outside on clothes. It's just a, a pet hate of mine that I, I like to have the same finish. And don't forget reverse stitch at the end just to knot it off. And then just cut it. I know this machine cuts somewhere, but... <laughs> right, so now we've gone round the pocket and just take the pins out a bit. And then we can just take our markings out as well, but... And that's your pocket. There. Okay. So if you look, that's your pocket created. Okay. So then what we're going to do is just pink and sheer around the pocket. Now, I've, I've done the seams, but I just need to go around here. So if we just pink and sheer around as quick as we can to get rid of the marking as well. Hang on a minute. It's all quick because these are right-handed and I'm left-handed. <laughs> But not to worry, they don't do pink and shears for left-handed people yet. Maybe we ought to tell them that it's about time they did. Because it's awkward for us left-handers. Because there's more left-handers in our work than there is right-handers, apparently. So I'm just going to just snip that off. And that's your pocket done. And that's your pocket done. So then... That's the other side of the skirt. So then what we do from there, we then open the pocket out towards the front. Okay, that way. And then what you do, you baste down to hold it in place there. Okay, so let me just tack down there just to hold it in place while you're doing your... Oh, hang on. A bit. This is just to hold it in place while we're just um, working on the waistband because you, you've got to gather the waistband and you need this gathered as well. So just do a few stitches just to hold it down. Now, what you could also do is, um, with basting, try and baste if you can if you haven't got to see it, in the same colour as the fabric you're using because what happens is if you forget to take the tacks out or something, at least it blends in and you don't always have to take the tacks out then. So that's another good reason to hold it down um, in the same colour because then, because to get tack size and everything, and if it's a different colour and it can mark and you haven't seen it, it's... It can ruin the look of an outfit, <laughs> so you have to be. If you're doing tacks, you need to really be observant and make sure that you've got them all out um, when you're finishing the project off. So all I'm doing is basting, hand basting that down. Okay, and that's it. Now, why I'm talking about basting and tacking, I want to show you how to do a tailor's tack because not everybody likes um, to use marker pens because I've had a few times where the marker pens actually left the mark and I've been upset. So a tailor's tack, you just use double the thread, fold it in half, and I'm gonna show, because what a tailor's tack does, it marks the both sides of the fabric with the same markings. So what I'm saying is, if you've got two pieces of fabric, to save you, that's tailor's tacks, if you can see there. So that's left me a lovely marking of where my fold line is. And that's where the buttonholes are going to be going, where the, th the red is. Okay? And these are good for fold lines. Yeah? If you want to use a marker pen, by all means use a marker pen. They're great things too. But I was brought up with Taylor's tacks and it's a, a, an old habit to die, <laughs> to let die. So, and you'll see what I mean with the way Taylor's tax works, because not all marker pens um, do what the job. So this is just a useful tip for you to do that Taylor's still used 
today. So thread and needle, double thread, don't knot it. You go in to the marking, pull it up. Okay, and you leave a long thread. You do need a lot of cotton for this, so what I recommend you do, buy cheaper cotton, okay? <laughs> so, because you do use a lot. So then you go in again, come up, and you leave a loop. It can be that big, it's up to you, whatever you want to leave. So then you just snip it off, the cotton, and you snip in the middle, okay? And then what that does, it leaves, this is two pieces of fabric, as you can see. You've got the right side and the wrong side. On the back, you've got that marking. And then on the front, you've got that marking. But what you have to do, and this is where the trick is, you open it up, but you don't open it all the way. You can see that. I need to come into shot a bit more, I think. Yeah? So, and then what you do, you snip in between Make sure you get some really good sharp scissors and that leaves the markings both sides if you can see there so and that's what you do okay so again and that's what tailors tacks are okay so you'll see all my tailors tacks i've got them everywhere <laughs> so i um like i say i'll use tailors tacks and that's all your markings on your waistband okay yeah right so now what we're going to do we're going to do the gathering of the rest of the skirt okay now to do the gathering it's a double stitch on a higher stitch i use number five on the machine and you run two stitches so i always go about a quarter of an inch in first and then i then do another stitch on the inside more towards the top of the skirt but rather than going down because you don't want to go into your seam when you're going to do your seaming when you're going to do your machining. You don't want the tacking showing, the gathering, should I say, showing below where you've got to machine on your like your five eighths line. Not this is a three eighths, so we have got to really go a quarter of an inch and then go an eighth of an inch in. Okay, so I should use centimeters, shouldn't I? Really? Now also on the three eighths because it, it's always inches, because that's the way the machine's made. <laughs> so on the 3 8 machine, um, just sewing, well, I'm going to go to the edge of the foot, which is about the quarter. So I'm going to change my machine to a five stitch, and then I'm going to run two stitches down. Now, another recommendation is I always, I, do this when I do tailors. Sorry, when I do the gathering, I always leave the first part of the stitching loose because you've got the thread coming from when you've done the machining. When you've started it, you've got the actual thread coming out. So I always start with the loose end there, but and then when I get to the other end, I do a reverse stitch because there's nothing worse if you leave it open both ends of stitching. You'll be gathering, gathering, gathering long, lovely, but then what you'll do, the stitching will just come away and that will really frustrate you. So, and the other thing I recommend, this skirt, it's in three panels. You've got the middle and you've got the two sides. Don't do the gathering stitches from one end to the other unless you're really confident, because if you pull and it breaks, you have to start all over again under the stitching strap cross. I've done it in three parts. I've done the middle and the two sides as three separate gathering, lots of gathering. So I recommend that as well. <laughs> so don't, whatever you do, do it all at one go because nothing will frustrate you more if it comes undone. Now the gathering is only done up to the notch that's on the skirt. So I'll mention that again. Okay, so you only gather up until the notch, okay, which is that notch there. Let me just show you the notch. That There's a little notch there, triangle. I always do my notches outwards as well, so they stand out a lot. Um, so, yeah, only do your gathering stitch up to the notch because all this is going to be folded in for your buttons and your buttonhole. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna run another stitch just inside that one, or next to that one, without going over. <laughs> So I'm just stitching along the top. Like I say, to show you it all in one in one go, it would have um, been too much because gathering can take a bit of time. And you've got to make sure you don't catch it in or so now that's gathered a bit anyway as you've gone along but now what we're going to do is pull the gathering stitch in okay to fit the waistband now as you can see I've, I've actually done a lot of it okay and you'll see I've gathered up to here um, and that does lap over by five eighths at the end so at the end you should have a five eighth overlap at the sides Okay, so I've machined that and gathered it. And now we've just got the last bit to do. Now, if you look at the, how much you've got to gather on this, it's quite a bit, because that's where you've got to meet that notch. That's where you've got to meet the notch. So, and that's the notch on the other one. So we're gonna have to pull it in quite a bit. It is a really nice gathered skirt. So we just go in, pulling it. Now, while you've all been in lockdown, and you've all got your grandchildren this is what you can be doing to let them know that nannies miss them <laughs> or granddad <laughs> for that matter so typical I can't find me in there <laughs> um yeah but you know granddad or because anybody can sew <laughs> so now this is a bit tough over the pocket it, it, it's it just needs a bit of encouragement. So all I'm doing now is I'm pulling the thread that we've left loose, okay? I'm doing this so that we can get it to meet the waistband. <laughs> so now, because that's the pocket, I can only get it this side, just see what I'm saying, I'll turn it round now. <laughs> so the pocket there, let's just gather it. See now, that's gathering up lovely. Okay, and what you have to keep doing is making sure that the notches meet. But also, you'll have a marking on the waistband, brown marking there, that is the actual side to meet the side seam. So that has to meet the side seam of the skirt. So if you look there, hang on a second. Let me just keep gathering up, up here. So if I start with here, so if we do notch to notch, okay. I can't put the pins in the way that should go because I'm left at, I do find sometimes that things are a bit tricky when you're left handed because like these pins, people put them in from that way in, but that's awkward for me. So I have to go in from that way. <laughs> but always try and put your pin in that way round. <laughs> take me too long to do it so I need to do it this way unfortunately so all I'm doing is pinning it and making sure the gathers come out and you don't go fold it in by accident because that's another thing that can happen so let me find that notch on the side that's the side seam there Right, just pinning. It's ever so weird talking without a presenter, like, talking at the side of you. It's like, woo! <laughs> and I have to keep talking. And, and, the, <laughs> and the trouble is, I'll switch off. And it's like my other half said, you've got to make sure you talk because I don't. I just go into Ooh, accountant mode where you just go into Ooh, and you don't talk. <laughs> So I've got to keep talking, keep laughing, and keep talking about grannies and granddads stuck in the lockdown, not seeing the grandchildren, so sad. But you see, you can be making them all the Christmas presents, all the sewing, it could be so much you can do. You know, I wasn't furloughed, I had to keep working. I missed those. <laughs> 
Now, now this should have been a bit gathered more, but um, I couldn't gather this bit to the side more because I was having to do it to show you, and I'm just having to hand gather this. But when you're doing it properly, you'll do it so that it's right, whereas I'm having to just fold it. If you're wondering what I'm doing doing this, it's because I had to gather it so far to show you, to demonstrate, so you would normally gather it properly to the waistband straight away. So, so there we go. So, and if you look, I've, I've tacked this on. I've actually basted that on in pink. So, so that if you can't see it, um, if you take it out, you won't be able to see the tacking. So what we're going to do now is just machine down to the notch. Now, we're only going to machine from there, the side to the notch. Okay? But make sure you take your pins out. <laughs> right, now we've got to make sure as well we change our machine stitching back to the notch the gathering stitch. So again, now three eighths down and away we go. Um, Janice. Yes, my sorry, lovely. I'm I'm far away and no one can see me at home. <laughs> but I just thought I'd let you She's know. She's gonna talk to me. Yeah I'm gonna talk to you about some lovely messages. Oh lovely. So Sadie's messaging good to finally get you on. Hooray! Oh, oh Janice is great. <laughs> I'm a, bit, um, I'm a bit shaken, I shouldn't oh, be. Oh no, it's adrenaline, you're excited <laughs> to be here. It is, it is adrenaline. Lots of people loving your hair, hair, saying you're brilliant, <laughs> loving the little outfit as well. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's yeah, lovely it to hear from people as well. It is, it's I mean, they're loving seeing you on the show, you're doing amazing. Oh. Sorry, it's a very, it's a strange situation being in like a kind of a... I know. A socially distant <laughs> show in such a small studio. It is. You've got me off air, who's not normally the presenter, <laughs> chatting away to you. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, but it's the oh, safest way of doing it. You've got to but, be safe. Yeah, You've got yeah. To be, and these people in Bournemouth, I'm sorry, Bournemouth. You, you should not go to that beach. Janice. What on earth is wrong with you all? Until we've got the cure. Janice. Oh. I know, but the thing, it's no, like, it's... me mother, my mother lives with me now. Oh. Bless her. Bless her cotton socks. I, I, luckily enough, I moved her in in November and I'm so pleased I did. But with these people going to Bournemouth, and I've got to stay safe. Yeah. And I'm thinking, do, you do silly whatever people. you think best to stay safe. I oh. think is the way. You know, follow the government guidelines. I know. I shouldn't. I, I know. I should, people should. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the discussions everywhere at home, aren't they? We Everyone's get fed got, up for talking about yeah, it. Yeah, everything. Make, so, well, it was a little bit of a distraction with the lovely weather. Did you get outside? No, I was at work. Oh, you were at work. I'm at work. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Somebody's so... got to keep the country going. <laughs> oh, it's Janice, the one woman <laughs> running the country with the, with the colourful hair. <laughs> right, right, I'll anyway. I'll leave you to it, Janice. OK. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> the message bit, Anna. Right, so now, if you look, half your waistband's on. So that's great, isn't it now? So at least we've done something, haven't we, this morning? <laughs> Even if we're having a laugh, we've done something. So, so what you do next, you've got to do the shoulder straps because you can't put the other waist, part of the waistband on because these straps have to be... Can we turn this round? Maybe not. Um, if you look on the back, and that, these have got to be put into the waistband, so you've got to do this next before you put the rest of the waistband on. So I've done one part, one of them, so that, it's here. So that's the one. So now I'm going to show you quickly how we do the other. So again, you cut out your strap, you've interfaced it already. So then what we're going to do, right sides together, you know, me and my wrong and right sides, right sides together, fold it in half, okay? Now, normally, you know me and my pressing, but all we'll do is finger press it this morning because it's a bit tight here. So if we just finger press it, and I'm going to stick a pin in because normally you wouldn't stick a pin in in this stage. I have got my balls off, uh, wonder clips here, have I? Um, no, what you'd normally do is just press this. You wouldn't stick a pin in at this stage, okay? So just to hold it down. So I'm just going to... Stick a pin in because we've got to 
sew the strap. So off we go there and then we're going to machine. Now where you machine this, you go along the raw edge, along there, and then you go at an angle into the corner like so. So we're just going to machine that again, three eighths from the one end, and you leave the other side open, okay? And on the other side, you have markings again, which we've done in Taylor's tacks. Um, again, with such a pretty pale pink fabric. I, I don't know about marker pens. I've just never really got on with them, but I know they are amazing, and some people swear by them to save time. But if you've got the time, I, I do find Taylor's tacks are a, a gem. So, um, but especially with pale pink clothes, not, it's not so bad with black or something like that. Um, but with pale colours and that, you just got to be careful. So, I always want to be safe and sorry. <laughs> As you can tell, because <laughs> of Bournemouth. So, right, and so, scissors to top. So that's what you've got at the moment, once you've machined it. So then what you have to do is layer the seam. Now to layer a seam, now normally what I would do is press that open. I, I would normally press that like that first. And I'd press that seam. Well, what I'd do is open that like so. And I would press it like that. I wouldn't worry about all these sides being crease because you're going to get rid of that anyway. So what I would normally do is open that and make sure I pressed all down there so that you've got a nice crisp, you know, finish on the other side when you turned it, okay? But we can't do that at the moment, right? But now what I do is I lay a seam. Now to lay a seam, what you do, you open the seam out and you trim, being very careful, just down the seam. You trim it away. It's just to take away some of the bulk on the turn. And why you do this is so that it takes away the bulk and also it will give it a nice finish. Again, all this is to give it nice finishes and to take away some of the... It's all about bulk to make it stay nice. So that's what you want to do. But again, I'm just... Snipping this, so you, that's how you lay the seam. Now I'm not going to go down all the way because of the time. So cut that off, cut that off. Then what you do, and this is another great invention, another great invention is this. And what you do, these, oh, God send. So I think they'll get them on the show. They do have them on the show. Uh, they might be out of stock at the moment, but I do know they have them um, because that's how I found out about them before. So literally, get the pole, shove it in, but these only work if the seam's closed at the one end. If it's open both ends, you don't use this, okay? You only use this if the seam's closed. So then you just pull that down. And like I was saying, <laughs> opening that seam, suppress it. I normally would, but then this creases it up. So then you get your piece of wood and then you push the end in and you start pulling that up as you're pushing that in. And then if you look, that's already turned. So then you pull that and then there it is. And then now they do these in three different sizes so that you can do your little straps as well. So great for like where the ribbon, I, I made the ribbon out of the fabric for the blouse. You don't have to, you can use shop bought ribbon. But I made that and I've got the thin one of these and it did exactly the same and it was great. So that's what I use that for. So then again, like I told you before, what I always do, there's my seam ripper. Now my seam ripper should be on the machine like it always is. <laughs> so, 
just open that out. Now we are running out of time, so but what you do with that once you've pressed it, press that open, get the crisp ends, close it. Anything else you can I'll show you a tip next time. But what you do then, you get your strap. I've already done the one, you've got your markings, you use your markings on this, meet the raw edges together on the other strap on this, on your other strap. Raw edges together, they're your markings, and you tack that down and then that's in. So that's what you do there, okay? Then the next job, once you've machined, well, you just base that on, and once you've done that, you've got the other side, you then apply the waistband to over, over the stitching. So you apply your waistband like so, and that's your markings again. You look, so you're just going to take them over, meet the middle, meet the middle seam there. Look, so pin that. There should have been a notch on the other side. I think I must have cut it off earlier. <laughs> Not to worry. So you do that. And then you sew around your machine. And what you have to do here is you take in, you go over the straps. Okay? So, so you just machine that all the way down. I'm just going to keep jumping a bit now. I won't be machining this down because at the time I just want to tell you how to. I always like to try and tell you something from the word go to the finish. You know me, people who know me know that I try and do a garment in <laughs> the old time I'm there. So, so what you do then, you would machine up the sides and across and then you turn it round the other way and then with the waistband what I should have done first was I should have gone in because I'm rushing, I should have took that in half an inch, pressed it down then once you've machined round the waist, okay, you turn it, I keep forgetting to look at the camera, <laughs> you turn it and then you actually do a stitch in the ditch. So when you've actually pressed this down, once you've turned it, you can machine once you've folded it into the waist there and covering up your gathering. So you turn it, I'll just give you a little bit of a demonstration if I can. So what you'll do is do that and you'll do a stitch right on the edge. Now again, it's all according to how you feel with stitching the ditch. I hand, I've always hand sewn that with a, like um, just a little slip stitch or a ladder stitch into the seam. Just so I'm in more control and it's something nice to do while you're watching telly, watching me, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So that's what you do there. Then you do your get ready for your button, buttons and your buttonholes. Now, I, I won't demonstrate your buttonholes because all our machines are different. So, but that's the way mine, my machine has done mine. So you do your buttons. Now, these are one inch buttons. Okay. Now, the way to open up an actual seam ripper, the way to open up a buttonhole is once you've gone round the machine and done the button, Hole, you then go into the middle with the seam ripper and do a hole. Okay? Then you get a little pair of scissors. Don't do it with the seam ripper because you've got more control with um, scissors and you get a better finish. That's what I found. So then go into the stitching in the middle of the stitching with your scissors and it will give you a smooth, where there's a seam ripper, you hack at it. Whereas little scissors, I find you can do it in one scoop, okay? And then the buttons, which are absolutely stunning for this dress, or the skirt, should I say? The buttons, once you've, I'll show you how you do it on the other side. These are the buttons. I'll just put it in for now. So these buttons are lovely. So if you look at that one, 
that's the one. And they've got different colours. So what you could do, because they're all different animals as well, you could have a mermaid, because you've got a button here as well. You could have the tortoise in the middle, the dolphin in the middle. Do you know what I mean? Or play with it. It's really nice. Absolutely lovely these are, these buttons. As soon as I saw them, I thought, oh, I do like them. That is so me. These crazy buttons are lovely. So I really like them buttons. Right, so that's your buttons and your buttonhole. Okay, without stabbing my finger. And then also on this skirt, at the back, it's tied. You do it over. And if you look, if you notice, lots of buttonholes. If you don't like buttonholes, you're going to get used to them. <laughs> you have three buttons either side. And this, what I thought was nice about this outfit was with the buttons, you can change it. So as the child grows or if you're making it for the granddaughter and you or, and you don't know the sizing, with having the three buttonholes, it's, it's your different lengths. So it will fit them no matter what. Do you know what I mean? So if you look, that's your tailor's tax again with the markings. And that's the other side. So these tailor's tacks are real good, you know. <laughs> and then what happens here, once you turn the waistband, you've got markings where to put these here, is where you put the button buttons on the back there. So again, these buttons, put them on the... Sorry, these buttons go on the inside. No, that's what I fell for. Yeah, these buttons go on the actual inside of the outfit. So you really need a flat button, not these type of buttons, you need a flat button, okay? I did a covered button, um, can't really show you, so, but I actually did a covered button and it's a bit thick, but if you do a flat button, because I did a cover button before, I thought, oh, I'll do cover buttons for the back without realising they're going to go on the inside and not the outside. So make sure you use a flat button, otherwise the button will dig in the child's back. Health and safety. So, <laughs> just be careful of that. So then once you've done that, you do the hems. But let me just show you what you do here, because why I didn't do the buttons. You fold, you've got the interfacing. You fold that into the one line. You fold it in again, but not to that line, not to the third line, that's your buttonholes. So what you do, fold it in, fold it in again. You then tack that down both sides, then you turn it over and that's your guide, if you look, for your buttonholes, buttons, sorry. So the buttons are sewn on there, like so. Okay, and you can do them in whatever design you like. So that's that, the buttonholes are done. And then all there is to it then is your hem of the skirt. And everyone does the hems different as well. So, and I've left that as well. So, honestly, once that skirt is done, you can see the beauty of it, the way it's going to be in the star fabric as well. So, absolutely beautiful. That is absolutely lovely, Joyce. Thank lovely? you so much for that. Skirt. So We've had so many you. people getting in contact saying how lovely it is to see you. We just put that down because it's on your yeah. mic. Um, but absolutely lovely to see nice. you and brilliant demo. It's a bit nerve-wracking being Ooh. out there on your own, <laughs> it isn't is, it? it is. You don't uh, realise how much you rely on the presenters. Well, that's the thing. I think it's nice also when too, of lots of people at home when they're the in their workrooms put on our YouTube channel yes. to have like someone in the background yeah. or... Yeah, like, cause it's, it's a bit... It's otherwise, true. you do get into your own little world, especially <laughs> as you're saying, just go silent you you're focusing on it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to talk through what you're doing, know, do you? So you don't have to do it, and it's hard to concentrate. Oh, yeah, no, but I think you once did... I've done it now, I'm, I'll be okay. No, you did absolutely brilliantly. <laughs> what we're going to do you... now is we're going to do show a little clip of how yeah. to buy. We're going to clear the desk. And yeah, then lovely. I'm going to get on and recap those bundles, if that's, that's okay. Lovely. But it's that's been lovely. absolutely amazing to have you here. Thank you. Thanks. Lovely to meet, see you all. <laughs> meet you okay. all. <laughs> Happy shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. It's me again. I'm Hannah. I'm normally producing, but I'm presenting today because our lovely Vix isn't very well. It was absolutely lovely to see Janice and slowly getting back to that like normality of having someone in. So thank you so much for all your lovely messages for Janice. I know she's going to go look at them now. It's, it is nerve wracking being out here. I can tell you that. Um, just so you can see a lot of what Janice was referencing there with the back of the crossover at the back there on the child's dress. Dress skirt. What are we... And I think it's like a skirt. Yeah, dunga, dunga skirt. I think I've invented a new item of clothes. It's a dunga skirt. Um, so you've got there. I'm just going to recap the bundles and the patterns separately. So if you want to use the orange bundle that we've got here, you're getting your two and a half metres of fabric and that is split over your spot. Um, so then you can go forward and do the blouse. Um, and then your orange for the um, obviously that little collar. Um, and what Janice was showing us there with the uh, dunga skirt, I'm going to call it. Please message in if that is not a technical term. Yes, the pattern does have details to make the top and the skirt. Obviously, we're limited on time. Where's the best place to hold that for you, Kat, there? Um, we're limited on time, so uh, we were just showing you elements then of the, the trickier bits. So you've got your gather and things like that. Um, Obviously, it'll be nice, even if you don't do the shirt as well, that fabric then could go in your stash and just teaming it with a little T-shirt. Um, so there's no pressure to make both elements, do you know what I mean? Um, when you've also got the pattern, we were saying, King, well, me and Cax were obviously watching, um, thinking we've got some denims. So when you do have that pattern, um, this in like a light denim would be absolutely gorgeous as well. Nice. Um, so then we've also got the bundle that Janice was working with. This is the most popular one at the moment. So uh, again, you get the full pattern. Oh, I'm getting all my instructions from a lovely director cat. I'm not not a uh, great presenter, but it's going fine. Oh, she's she's always saying mean things to me as cat. Um, there is also um toddler and child um. Cat, after this, can, when we show the pattern on its own, would we have to see the back of the packet for people? Um, but again, Janice was talking about how this can be adjusted as well. So, you know, I think that's quite good. And then also, if you're making it, kids grow quite quick, don't they? Apparently, that's what I'm going to refer to a lot today. So it's good to have that kind of three different buttons on the back so you can do the lengths. Um, so then you're getting your star fabric for the outside and your little dunga skirt um, and then if you are making that blouse or you're putting that into your stash um, then you've got your spot fabric there to do the two options um, pattern on its own we are again again limited we are limited in offering this pattern on its own so I know a lot of us have certain fabrics in mind I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna show the back is the back okay on the overhead oh I'm so sorry I've it's which way round things go with camera. Oh, oh thanks. Cat's being very supportive here. Um, so obviously you've got all the details on the back of your packet there. Um, so you can, maybe you are, you know, you haven't seen your grandchild um, in a while. So you're just checking your measurements there. If you, when this goes on YouTube as well, you can um, stop it at that point. And maybe have a double check. Um, and you, 
getting all your pattern pieces. Fantastic, you've got all your pattern pieces and your instructions in there as well. Um, I'm going to do the buttons very quickly and then wonder clips that we saw Janice using. Um, all the other tools are underneath. Um, I may do left-handed scissors and pinking shears in the next hour as well. So we've got a dressmaking hour and I think they're relevant. Um, we've got Janice used the mermaid buttons. They are gorgeous. I love little mermaids. There you go. I don't know what else can you say about mermaids. There's a dolphin with a dolphin with a bow in its head. Um, I really like these flower buttons. I think they're gorgeous. I love that you've got the spot ones in there. Gorgeous. That's a I'd tell the presenter off to go, oh, that's gorgeous. Um, and then we got the little ladybirds. Who wants something a bit different? There we go. Um, we've also got these flatter buttons. This is the ones that are used on the front of the dress here. Yes, <laughs> sorry. I forgot to mention, Kat, I'm going to those buttons. Um, and then I actually might save these wonder clips for the next hour because we've got dressmaking tools. If that's okay. Brilliant. I hope you enjoyed Janice's demo. I know I did. So um, in the next hour, we're going to do some dressmaking tools. I'm going to recap some bundles and um, get your messages, really. I'm getting good at the messages. So thank you so much. We'll see you after the break. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it and when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Hi, welcome back. Um, I'm Hannah. I'm normally producing. I know a lot of you have heard this if you watch the whole show, but if you've just tuned in, you will think that is not Vix, is it? And who is this lady? Um, I'm Hannah, so I work at Sewing Street. I'm normally behind the scenes. Our lovely Vix today is a bit poorly. Um, she caught the sun yesterday, so you've got me, I'm afraid. I'm sure a lot of you watched um, the demo um, with Janice earlier on. If you have just missed it, it will go onto YouTube a little bit later on in the day. Right, I don't, I know a cat who's my director today is uh, just telling me off because I've made the desk a mess and I'm just like trying to fold this back into the shape. I don't know, I was like mixing things around. I was, yeah. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat the early bird because um, what we actually do is when we start the show at 8 a.m. every morning, we do an early bird, which um, is a, Something that sells perfectly fine. Perfectly fine? That's not a very good word. Perf yeah, it sells anyway, but we always put a special price to kind of reward people for getting up nice and early with us. Early start. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Kat. Kat just went uh, all for sticking with us with Hannah today. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking that way because she's in that room. It's me and her. It's the girls show. Me, Kat and Janice. Dream team. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we start with an early bird to reward you for getting up nice and early with us. And then you've also paid your postage and packaging for the whole day. Um, over half the stock of this one's gone. We've actually had this one in the past and it's been super popular. This, yeah, this is... Um, by the way, it's still half meter. I just can't work out how to fold this back into shape. Um, so you get half a meter of each of these, so it's two meters overall. Um, we 
No, it's fine, Kat. You don't have to fold my fabric. Uh, we talked about earlier about not just using... Well, we talked about... Oh, I just talked. Um, talked earlier about not using it as a whole bundle if you don't, ha don't want to. Um, so you could just have, you know, some creams for, you know, backings of things. Um, and then you're thinking of mixing this in. Maybe you've got some Tula Pink fabric or something like that. Solid fabrics make your stash go further, especially with a discount. Um, so there we go. I'm also going to, before I get onto the dressmaking uh, tools, I'm going to recap some of the most popular bundles from that first hour. Um, what's really great is that as soon as we go live in the morning, everything from that day is then on the website. I'm doing this because this is me scrolling <laughs> on the website. Um, if you go onto our website, uh, www.sewingstreet.com, no, it's fine. You don't have to, Kat. I just like doing my, uh, that was my, like, advert voice. <laughs> yeah, they don't ask me to do adverts. Um, if you go onto our website, don't be scared. It says Jewelry Maker. Um, we are sister channels with them, and we are relatively new. So, obviously, all of this happening as well is a little bit of a spanner in the works. But we're still here, still going. Um, so, we are st in the process of developing our own website. So, you will go to Jewelry Maker, but you can watch a live feed... Um, or you can turn me off and just go underneath, see all the products for today's show, which was great in that first hour because people were checking out on all different types of bundles. Um, another thing with the bundles is that we've then gone through, because we've got a great bundle kind of team here, who are going through and matching colours together, like with the pastel bundle, they know the shades of those. So it takes some of that kind of... It's not fear. Um, I think... Lots of people buy fabric off the internet now. It's a given, but I think it's quite an alien concept to start with because you're like, I'm not feeling it. Um, I'm not seeing that colour. Whereas, so if you are, you know, shopping with us for the first time, maybe a bundle is a good place for you to start. Um, these are all our quilting weight cottons. Um, so these are all amazing quality. Like the early bird, it's not a different quality because it's got money off. It's just, it's just a deal. We, we kind of, we promised it um, in the morning and that's what we've continued to do. So um, I'm just going to repeat this mixer bundle. So it was the bundle that isn't solids. It's kind of that mottled effect. Can we get this just one on the overhead, please? So well over half the stock of this one went in the first hour. Obviously, we're loving rainbows at the moment. And um, this one's a little bit different because you've got those kind of Kind of, it looks like that batik. Yeah, it looks like batik, but it isn't. It's a printed um, pattern, so you're getting that look. Not everyone likes, I don't know why I'm slamming the fabric. Not everyone likes to work with a batik. Again, take it out, do lots of different things with it. I love this colour and I really want to do, like, dried lavender. Is that very stereotypical because it's a lavender colour? But, like, little lavender bags or hanging hearts in a spare room with lavender in them. Smell beautiful in a spare room. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, so I sounded very um, uh, Luton then, didn't I? Um, so you've got all that beautiful colour selection. Well, yeah, I sound like oh, I've got a Luton accent sometimes. That's where I'm from originally. Um, right. Pastel bundle, which I apparently picked up a million times in the first hour, but didn't really mention. Um, you're getting a full selection of your colours here. Um... I'm also, I'm going to do it, Kat. I'm going to open them all up to show you what your two and a half metres fabric looks like. I'm not going to fold it back up. I'm just going to put it underneath. <laughs> She's, um, Kat is making fun of me because uh, the rules are you unfold it, you fold it back up. I've just stated on air, I will not be folding this back up. You can afterwards. Um, I just want to, I know the desk is messy. This is what I do. This is what I'm like at home. I think... Well, I'm just going to drape it everywhere. Beautiful. Um, just, I think, because we see them all folded up and we see a half metre. But I think sometimes to visualise that you are getting a lot of fabric and um, obviously that, well, no, it doesn't differ with what project you're doing. It differs how long it's going to last with what project you've got in mind. But maybe you do do baby quilts. Maybe you make quilts for charity. Um, <laughs> so you make quilts for charity or, um, again, I thought this one's nice, so thinking about grandkids and maybe you're not seeing them, things like that. Um, 
Oh, this was now... I don't know. You know, when I was like, there's a lot of fabric in here. I was like, I'm going to get them all open. But, um, yeah, well, it's like there's too much. I don't know. This wasn't the best idea I've ever had, was it? This is why my normal job is upstairs producing. No one, no one sees me. I'll have an idea and then be like, no. Yeah, there's no filter. There's no one filtering me today. Yeah, <laughs> well, I've had to like, they, like, there is a lot of fabric. I think I'm making my point. I don't know if that is the most visually pleasing shot that I've made there. Oh, it does look like ice cream. I just want to say there is a lot. You're not just getting, <laughs> just blue. You're not just getting a tiny little square of fabric. There's a lot to play with there. Oh, there is more. There is a lot. I'm now just going to, um, obviously, obviously respect the product. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to store it down here. Oh, right. So because I can't be trusted, Kat has come in and been like, please, just hand it to me. Just hand it to me. I'm stressing her out. Oh, there's this machine pedal there. Right. See, she's going to fold it while she directs because I can't be trusted. Um, but that's the pastel bundle, super popular colourway, and I just think for all of them illustrating, you're getting a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start with buttons, and then I'll get into the the, the nitty-gritty of the dressmaking tools. I'll get a little bit more dressmaking toolsy. Um, we just didn't show these in the last hour, and these are some of our other buttons um, that we have going on, going on, going on, on the website, available. Um, so obviously we did a little girl's dress and top, uh, but I'm going to be stereotypical. Maybe a little bit more little boys because you've got your planes and your footballs. I know we got these in when Neil wanted them in, so he's also a child. And our boss, so nice to see you, Neil. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. I forget I'm on telly. Um, so really nice to accessorise. Obviously be aware of the age of children and what's appropriate. Um, because small parts. Um, and then we got bees. I love the bees. I love bees. How many times can I say bees? <laughs> um, really cute. Uh, we had bee fabric and looking over there because I made a pin cushion with it and just put into the centre the little bee. Uh, which also, yeah, covered up my messy work. Also looked really cute. They are adorable. Uh, maybe make a little wall hanging as well or an embroidery. Um, yeah, like a little 3D elements on a wall hanging, maybe a home sweet home. Yeah, needle felting. I'm saying yeah, as if Kat's in the room and we're all having it. I'm like, yeah, Kat, great idea. Yeah, she is, she is talking to me. Um, I can't show these. I can't. You can't see all of these. Can I open these, Kat? I'm going to open them. Oh. Oh, sorry, Haley. I didn't open them. They were already open. Yeah, no. Oh, and there's another bag. This is like a game show. Yeah. Oh, this is difficult, isn't it? Everyone loves to hear me open a bag on air, isn't it? It's like, do you ever question why people have popcorn at the cinema? Like the loudest snack. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just had my director go, Hannah, you're on telly. But I always think, who did that? Was that a joke? They were like, oh, yeah, like really loud snack food in a really quiet environment. Anyway, I'll, I'll think about that in my own time, not with these buttons. Um, lovely little garden buttons. Obviously, we know my uh, gardening issues, my gardening love. Um, yeah, a little card good. Or even if you're doing like a little covered notebook, you could put like a little 3D element. I really like the detail in this button. This is me trying to do the overhead. With the different colour tones in the daffodil. Yeah. Or onto a brooch design or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Jewelry maker website. You're on there so you could do hair, cl hair, hair clips, hair grips. I don't know what. I'm going to put those over there now. Very tidy. Right. Should we do the overlocker? Because I am, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to demo, I'm afraid. I think seeing me present is enough today. We don't have to. Oh. I'm just going to clip it back on the front. That's fine. Oh, 
Hi, sorry, I'm back. My mic came off. Um, it's also, it's because, actually, it's because I've kind of left it loop down and I caught it on my knee um, because I'm not, not very good at this. Right, the overlocker. So on the web, we have two overlockers. We have the Juki and we have the Elna. They are both air threading overlockers. They are at different price points. Again, you can out there get uh, more affordable overlockers than that. If you're going to look elsewhere, we can't, we can't hide that fact. We're not trying to. What we've done is when we've picked our overlocker, looked at brands that we trust and we work with. And I think that's something important when you're buying a sewing machine or an overlocker or a cover stitch or anything like that. It, uh, an established brand is a great way to go um, because you know then you've got your guarantee. With Elna, you've got your two-year guarantee. Same with Juki. Uh, both of those companies that we work with have UK-based uh, uh, customer service teams that we are in contact with ourselves to ask the questions to. So we know that you are getting quality of service. Juki, which is the more we've not got on the table today, but it's on the website, the more expensive expensive it is that the higher price point maybe but it is it's a more considered overlocker than this one um it's I, I it is just where you're at in your journey do you have a more industrial history in their machines um so there are a few features on there that are different to this one due to due to their background and the nature of how they make their machines both are quality machines otherwise we wouldn't have them on here um the elner is the one i picked today because i have seen some amazing demos with our lovely dev Shore of this and if you do go onto our website not onto our website if you go onto our website you'll have a great time but if you also go onto our youtube and you search uh the elner air um air threading overlocker search sewing street other first <laughs> that's why you're just in youtube um but yeah do search search our um, sewing street and then look at the Elna Air threading overlocker um, and Debbie's done some amazing demos with it so you won't have to see me today um, the air threading element that both of the overlockers we offer have I'm going to open this up um, it differs on each of them uh, this one's a pumping system, so you're basically pumping air through the machine to bring the thread through. The other one is a, a faster button system. It doesn't differ that much, but again, that industrial history from Juki probably leads them, I'm presuming, to that, you know, slightly different system. Uh, but they both work in an amazing way and taking that fear out of what I think a lot of us scared of, of overlockers. Like, my first... I'm not a dressmaker, I'm not going to lie. In any way, I just can't. I'm not, I admire dressmakers, but I'm not a dressmaker. I've used an overlocker, obviously, at work, um, but the first time I saw it was um, at school. I did uh, textiles at school. We, we kind of shied away from the overlocker, and every time it came unthreaded, it, it was the teacher's job to go back to it. Yeah, well, um, a cat saying she went on um, tour, she's been on tour with lots of different musicals in the costume thing, the costume thing is that what I'm allowed to call it costume department um, and it was their their punishment to thread the overlocker um, so hopefully with these like air threading systems that kind of takes that out of it uh, because what you do is you can see here the threads going down these little holes um, and then you will pump the air through and it will just bring it back up to where you need it um, ready to go there is that sure your lower looper and that's the scary bit i think that people you know you, most of us if you're getting an overlocker you can most probably thread a machine and most machines follow the basic kind of same pattern of threading this lower looper situation isn't in a normal sewing machine so to be taking all of that out and doing it for you takes out that fear and therefore we are getting the overlocker and we're getting it out the box when we get home and using it rather than buying something that we're not going to use I, it's, it doesn't benefit us it doesn't benefit you so to have that's why we picked air threading overlockers at uh, both both models do that because they are so much more efficient and the upper the upper loopers it's just following that arrow system down which is a lot easier because it's more more visual i suppose we we are 
all, I'm, I'm assuming we're all used to. A lot of us, and if you're at the stage of buying an overlocker, will most probably be used to threading a sewing machine. So your upper loopers are easy to follow. Um, with this, it comes with your full instruction manual that also talks through it. Uh, Debbie has also talked through it on the show, which you can go back and look at. Um, there is also help through Elna uh, as well. And there's other videos on YouTube, like we, I'm, I'm speaking for all of us again. I'm sure we all look elsewhere. Like I know I look elsewhere and Google on YouTube videos for creative grids where we've got different rulers in and see how different designers all across the world are using the same product. With this kind of machine, there's still, there's lots of different videos to help you along the way. Um, you can engage and disengage your blade, which is all protected under there. Obviously be careful when you use it, but when you say blade, it isn't, you know, coming at you kind of thing. It is safe. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going with that. I was just, um, it can be disengaged or engaged to cut as you overlock or not. Um, in these, I would never show, throw your instructions away for anything. But in here, they're talking about doing your rolled hem and the different kind of stitches that it uses and so and where that's uh, appropriate. Um, with this one here, um, what was I going to say? Uh, it's not computerised. The Juki one has a computerised screen where you can go through everything. It's whatever, whatever you are most comfortable with. Um, doesn't come with these threads on there. I know Debbie's put these coloured ones on there um, when she does the demo just to see where those threads are actually interlocking. Um, I would advise, because I've not really gone into there, I've talked about the differences and, well, I've talked to it from a producer's point of view, which is my job normally of why we have two brands, why they're a different price point and who might, you know, be looking at those different models, but I've not gone into, you know, where you'd use that overlocker uh, stitch and things like that. Um, presumed a bit of knowledge, but if you do go back, Debbie's demos are great at that. Um, she she will talk you through the different, she does rolled hems, she'll talk about that, I wanted to show you, but I just lift up my dress, that kind of, uh, the finish that you see on manufactured garments, um, which, is that professional finish. So if you are, you stick, you do all your machine work and you maybe use an overcasting foot on your machine, that is, a, it's like your machine's version of an overlocking stitch, but maybe you're ready to take your work to the next level. Maybe you use a lot of jersey. These are perfect for jersey. Maybe you do a lot of kids clothes. They're quick, they're easy to use once you get going. You will need a machine as well. Uh, you can construct on these, but there's there's advantages and disadvantages, but it isn't a replacement for your machine. It's that next part of your collection if you are into dressmaking. Right, you also get um, a th a, like a little uh, thread collector. Yeah, thread collector's the right word. You get one of those on there, which I think is quite useful because it gets messy. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> Oh, fantastic. I'm going to do the Madeira thread, if that's okay. Because uh, these are for your overlocker again. Uh, uh, tips and tricks. Um, I think with your, you're getting all of these in there. Um, do you want me to tip it up, Kat? Oh, okay, brilliant. So you've got all your neutral colours in there. Um, 1,200 metres on each spool. Um, you get them all. It's not like just picking three out. Um, that seems like a lot, but if you're using your overlocker a lot, Obviously, the complexity of the stitch uses more thread. Uh, you want a good quality. Otherwise, why, why are you bothering? <laughs> are you allowed to say that? No, but you want, you've made something. You want it to last. You want, you know, you're proud of it. A good quality is going to last. Um, tip with your overlocker, different threads will be used up at different speeds. So do have a swap around of them. Uh, these are the general colours you're going to use. Obviously, we had these colours on here to show you the stitching. There are, we don't offer them, but there are like variegated threads and things like that if you are thinking about your overlocking being kind of a feature of what you're doing. But these are kind of your basic, your staple, your go-to. Oh yeah, I will. I'm just gonna get you one of each colour. So you've always got, oh, I put them right where I wasn't allowed to put them. 
This is very, oh, this is a lot, isn't it? Well, I think um, Kat has been right. She came in and said, what have you done to this desk? And what I have done to this desk is make it very difficult for myself because it's so full. There's a reason why we're tidy and I'm just naturally not tidy. I'm naturally a creative soul. Oh, you are a creative cat. Cat today is wearing a pair of trousers that she made yesterday to work. I'm very, oh, oh I'm so jealous. Um, so these are the colour range you're gonna get, but you are getting, oh no. It says it in the graphics, 24. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna have to count. And I'll probably start counting on my fingers. Can I put them back in? No, just to clarify if anyone's watching, haven't got 24 fingers. <laughs> um, you will get more of your white than the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're ever so slightly different shades, but nah, they're the same. Yeah, they're the same. I don't, well, that was me really, nah. It does say six colours, but that is wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna say it, that's wrong. You're getting five because you're getting two rows of the whites. Just thought, just thought I'd let you know. 100% polyester as well, um, which a lot of dressmakers do use. Polyester, if you haven't used polyester thread, you're coming back to sewing and things like that. As you know, it's all about quality with thread anyway. Um, that's why we're using that brand name of Madeira Threads. It's not, if you're comfortable using polyester, polyester has changed from original polyester threads. The developments in that, like if we're doing a kit, we always put Guterman thread with it, which is a polyester thread. Uh, I know Debbie loves working with Guterman, I hope she doesn't mind me saying. Um, there's, no, there's no right or wrong, it's personal preference and the developments in the thread world, is that what it's called? <laughs> that sounds like a bizarre world. The thread world, it's, it's changed, it's good quality. Um, right, can I do these dressmaking shears? Right, this is a pair of right-handed dressmaking shears I have left-handed. Uh, we've got some left-handed ones coming up. Uh, great gift idea, that's the best place to show those. Um, they're a large kind of traditional dressmaking shear uh, because they're that full metal design. They are heavy. Um, they've got your little, little bit on the handle there. So when you're laying it down flat, so you're not lifting the fabric as much because when you're lifting that fabric and cutting it, you're then distorting what you're cutting. So everything's going to be a different size. So if you can, Cut as low as you can. I'll say as if I'm cutting fabric for dressmaking all the time. I feel I watch, obviously, this show quite a lot. So my tips, this is the thing, I'm watching all the time. I go home and I don't have the ability at the same level that I am in my head. I know a lot. I do, I do so, but dressmaking's that... The thing I would love to do, I'm always buying patterns and things, and I, I've made pyjamas. That's honestly the level I'm at. But we see some such amazing things here. It does really inspire me. Like maybe, maybe I can branch out to dressmaking. Um, right, I'm going to do the left-handed scissors. They are from Fiskars. Um, these were in Janice's hour. Janice is left-handed. Um, I'm also left-handed. Um, I've never learned to use right-handed scissors. I know a lot of us have been forced in the past, maybe, or just felt more comfortable to learn with right-handed. I find it a lot easier to use left-handed, and I'm going to be honest with you, I have a pair of right-handed shears, like scissors at home, and that I cut fabric with because I, I, I couldn't find in my <laughs> menagerie of fabric the right scissors. Um, so I was using the right-handed ones. It looked like I was chewing at it. Like, you, like it, it, it wasn't effective. It was time consuming and annoying actually. So you are able to cut through smoothly. You've got the, oh, that was me cutting very tentatively the air. Um, got the brand name of Fiskars. They have the history there, the quality of the blades. They know what they're doing. Um, they also, they say general purpose on them. So if you've got someone that's left-handed in your family, that, you know, these could be your go-to scissors for that person if you struggle to get left-handed scissors. 
but also if you then just put these to one side, just use them for fabric, they can be your dressmaking scissors. Don't let the general purpose element of that put you off. It is just don't, don't cross contaminate. Don't cross contaminate your scissors. I think as soon as they're dressmaking, you're cutting for fabric is important. They aren't the bacon scissors. Uh, or they're not the you know, roofing felt scissors. They need to be dressmaking scissors. They need to be your sharp. You need the results. You do. Right. Uh, another, uh, another essential is um, small but mighty, um, your little um, thread unpicker or seam ripper. Um, we all go wrong. That's me a lot. Um, but you need to be able to, you know, not be sat in there for hours or having to cut away. Um, you've got your little sharp point that you can pull up your stitches and you can get back on at stitching it. Get back on at stitching it. Get back to what you actually enjoy doing, not unpicking. Uh, useful bit of kit. Lots of machines come with little ones. This one's a little bit bigger. It's a fiddly job anyway. You want a nice handle that you can grip onto. If you're doing Bargello or Trip Around the World, it's an essential for those. Uh, because part of the actual method is to unpick. So, um, useful for your useful toolbox, I was going to call it, yeah. Sewing box, there you go. All the words escape me. Um, right, I'm going to do the Jules Fallon book, if that's okay. Can we do it on the overhead, please, Kat? Fantastic. Uh, so, complete guide to dressmaking. This goes through a lot of tips, tricks, and techniques, and Jules, lovely lady, knows what she's doing. Um, so a great go-to book. Also, if you'll notice, I'm gonna talk about price point first. You notice know, that's 11.99. We started with this, I can't remember, was it? Because it's different to the RRP. So the RRP on this book is 15.99. I think we were first at 14.99. You might have to, I'm doing that thing when I close my eyes again and forget I'm on telly. I think we started with this at 14.99. Uh, Vicky came off, came off, came off, came back. Vicky came back and was doing a dressmaking show and it was the first one she'd done in a while. Um, she'd never seen this book before and she said, please, 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 can I have a special price on something? And Hayley, big boss Hayley, and big boss Neil, uh, let us um, put a discount on that. So it's never gone back up. I think because people didn't, people, uh, the graphics were never written with, you know, money off. It's kind of now just slipped into it. It's eleven ninety nine when the RRP is fifteen ninety nine. So amazing, right? That was a, that was me doing a bit of a, the producing bit there, talking about the numbers. Let's talk about the fun stuff. So the book's all broken down into your different sections. There's lovely jewels, looking glamorous. Oh, okay. Um, so then you're talking about your kit. So if you have got the sound off, which I would advise, uh, this book here breaks down for you what I've just talked talking about with your air, um, your marking tools and your seam ripper there. So in a lot more detail and probably a lot more useful than my, uh, my words, my words. Yeah, I forgot words then. Um, um, and then it goes, that's actually really nice there. It says nice to have in your kit. So it's that next step. So it goes your essentials and the nice to have. And it talks about overlockers. You're not, you're probably not going to start out straight away with an overlocker, but it is nice to have. And it is that next step. Oh, yeah, dressmaking dummies. I'm now reading the book. Anyway. Um, yeah, I know. I need this book. Um, talking about needles. Hand needles, machine needles. Um, this is really, really great, really valuable. Talking about the different types of needles and what the purpose of them is. What the purpose of them is. Because this might be the questions that you feel silly asking in shops. This might be, like you shouldn't feel silly, but uh, you know, it might be that last bit that you forget. Um, and then you get home and you think your machine's broken or wonder why it's missing stitches or it when if you're not using a ballpoint needle with your jersey, when you pull it, the, um, the stitches are more likely to break. Like, this is going to help you out no end. It is having the right tools for the job. If you're coming back to dressmaking after a, a few years, maybe, you just need a refresh of what all these little bits and bobs are. 
I think, really useful. Um, talking about your scissors, using, we obviously, sewing bee wise, we've seen a lot of dressmakers starting using rotary cutters, which is interesting. No, no, I, interesting sounded very, no, it is, it's, uh, no, it's, I don't know, yeah, it is interesting, it's a bit different. Um, talking about breaking down the autonomy of a sewing machine, talking about overlocker, I'm going to stiff, skip a few stages, sewing machine feet, really useful, maybe you've got a hand-me-down machine and you don't know what a foot is. Um, also, the face, uh, Facebook fan page or our Facebook page is quite good for that. I've seen in the past people post a picture and go, oh, I've got my machine out of the loft. What is this foot? Um, it's a really good community of people helping out like that. And people putting their suggestions, threads, haberdashery, understanding your fabric, which I think is really useful um, because there are so many different fabrics. It's not just, you know, here's your cotton, here's your polyester there are mixes there are blends there are things that work for different uh, dressmaking projects for different reasons with the drape and things so starting to understand that and talking about it also talking about when you're going to use your calico if you're making toiles even further breakdowns in your silks and your wools special occasion how you're going to choose your fabric so it starts to break all of them i love this page which talks about the details on a pattern envelope and all those kind of um, like your symbols and what they mean. I think that's really useful because do not take your, do not take, I'm a, say I'm a 14, I'm a 16. Do not take that and look at 14, 16 on there. Always measure yourself because you differ from shop sizes. And I, although that sounds like a hassle and you know, none of us want to know our measurements. I really don't after lockdown. Your final result is going to be nicer. That's why we're doing dressmaking. You can't, we're all different shapes and sizes. We've all got different assets in different places. Going into a shop, they are only, you know, we're not all gonna sit fit in the size, same size 14. And your making dressmaking is a bespoke to you. So I, that's that major advantage. Like you, your measurements, you know, bite the bullet. No one ever needs to see them, you know, get a trusted friend if you're isolating with them to do them for you there's lots of tutorials on online that um you know talk through measuring yourself get those right and then your final result is why you're dressmaking you know that feeling of someone saying that looks amazing where did you get it and be like you can't it's made to me made to measure it's why you pay more for made to measure isn't it understanding your symbols again there is so much useful in here even there's um Jules has actually included photocopy this where you need all your different measurements and things and then talking about how you translate that then onto your pattern pieces and actually a little bit into pattern manipulation there um, and starting because initially you'll have your measurements and you'll go along with the pattern but as you progress you can start to then tailor make those patterns and you can do hacks to your patterns to start to you know uh, maybe putting sleeves onto something that doesn't have sleeves and things like that you know if you're not comfortable with the top of your arms or something like that it's all there's all room to move into twirl and fitting that's using your calico I think I've got carried away with this book I love it I know I'll, I'll move quicker again adapting your pattern adapting your pattern I've just repeated that, sorry. <laughs> Adapting your pattern again, is that where you're gonna move into your hacks and developing things, different shapes and sizes. Um, then talking about your making, what you're gonna need, creating your shapes. I just, I absolutely love this book uh, for the details it goes into and breaking down all the different elements, seeing the elements of tucks. You might have a pattern that says you need, you know, tucks along the front, like on, the dress at the top that Janice didn't make the top on air, but the little top here for kids has got tucks along the front. And you might just have a pattern that says do five tucks. I haven't, you know, ever done that before. This is breaking down that into different stages for you. This is a bit clear. I'm just going to flick quickly. All different. I know, I know. I'm not even halfway through. I just love this book. I think 
for eleven ninety nine, the amount of information you get is amazing. Like it touches upon different things enough for you to have guidance and to start to learn a new technique. And if you want to take that further, you can, or it's a reference um, to refresh things. Talking about finishing seams, Hong Kong finish. Oh yeah, if you go on a retreat or something like that, amazing, amazing experience. We can't at the moment, but you can have those that information, say from Jules at home. Like we can, like this is the thing. You know, books are great. I love books. But you can go and Google what you need. But you might not know the correct terminology and then you might end up looking at a different thing. Also to have it as a go-to, like I love to have recipe books at home, whereas I can look up recipes, but it's nice to have it physically there. You know it's there. You can always pinpoint the page. You know Hong Kong finish, I think it was. Hong Kong seam, the Hong Kong finish when you're binding the seam, like you might not know the terminology for that. So to have a book and to be able to flick through or to be able to flick through in an evening or something like that and be like, actually, that would really fit this project. Uh, that might be something you want to bring in. Sorry, Kat. I know, 11.99, I have gone on about this book, haven't I? I just love it. You've got all your different closures. Oh, look, yeah. For eleven ninety nine, I don't understand why they let uh, Vix have that money off this book. Well, yeah, no, fifteen ninety nine RRP is amazing, and then ugh, strange things, strange things happen. Like I'm presenting, strange things happen. Nice. Oh yeah. Right, I am going to stop because I could be there forever with that book, but um, I I love it. I think it's amazing. Yeah, just have a flick through. If you, yeah. Sorry, I'm just staring at the book like, yeah, you are great, aren't you, book? <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry if you are watching. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to the wedding dress book. Oh, no, I love this book too. I, I like the idea of wedding dresses. Um, there's also like lots of tips and tricks maybe that you could use if you were doing prom dresses or... Oh, was it? Cats, cats say make of the week was like a prom dress this week. So um, these kind of event dresses or taking elements from the wedding dress book. Or maybe it's your dream or someone in your family's dream to have a handmade wedding dress. Um, I know when my friend got married, her mum made the wedding dress, which was amazing. Like she had a very vintage style dress um, and part of their experience experience was mother-daughter trip they went up to London and they picked out the fabric together and the pattern and she was involved in the making her mum did the majority of it but it was uh, you know something she'd always wanted her mum to make her wedding dress I don't know how pleased her mum was about that job <laughs> there's quite a lot of quite a lot of um responsibility but I it made it special it's special anyway if you got a wedding dress but you know Thinking about it that little bit more. Beautiful photography there. Talking about them. Yeah. Um, so you've got all your contents there with all your different books. Because you could be doing bridesmaid dresses. You could, you know, this one, sorry to flick back, but this one here, you could do dance. You could do, uh, you could do vintage dance kind of competitions or go to class. Yeah, it does talk about varials. Um, all your tips and hints about different um, different body shapes and tip, tips and tricks for that. Um, really important with anything, if you're having anything fitted, but especially a wedding dress, when you're getting your measurements done, wear nice underwear. Not to impress the person that's doing your measurements in any way, but, you know, one bra is very different to another bra. I'm not going to lie. And it can affect how something's going to sit. So especially you might have special underwear for your wedding, let's say. Do wear that when you go and get foundation garments. That's the professional lady term I should be using. It's blooming written there. Um, <laughs> wear the correct foundation garments that you plan to wear on the day. Mm. 
No, you want to, not to, not in an impressive way, but it makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, talking about all your fabrics. I'm just going to go through to the making a toile when we, and doing where your measurements are and everything like that, I think. Fantastic. Finishing your seams, all your tips and tricks there at the beginning. Let's get on to the dresses. I love all the photography. So this is one that I really like this anyway, as a little dress, maybe an event, when we can go back to events. Um, yeah, bridesmaids as well. I think if you do, with all the petticoats, if you did like 50s dancing kind of thing as well, or with a, without the petticoats, beautiful style of dress. Um, drawing your patterns, everything like that. All your useful tips. Maybe you are doing, maybe you're not making a dress from here, but you take elements from this book of its tips and tricks that are a little bit, a little bit unique, uh, a little bit more specialised into kind of that formal dress. Formal dress, is that the right word? It's not your day-to-day -day dressmaking, all of this. Uh, you're not going to be making a bodice for every outfit. You might. Yeah, if you want to, that's fine. But, you know, there might be a little bit more detail in here that um, not all books go into. There you go. Fantastic. I'm going to flick through to the end. Oh, talking about working with lace, choosing your veil, and also uh, doing decorative headpieces and veils is in this book. And veils are expensive is something that I've learned from people getting married. And maybe, maybe you're not going to make the whole dress for someone, but it could become uh, a veil or like a decorative hairpiece that's then passed down in the family. Um, and, you know, that's a nice thing. It's a smaller memento to keep from the day. Maybe you're renting the dress for the day, but that veil is the piece that you're going to keep and pass down or just keep and look back in kind of your memory box. It's that kind of more manageable size. Yeah, it will, it will always fit. Thanks, Kat. Um, you've got full-size pattern pieces at the back as well. Um, so, and they're in colour. Fantastic. Right. I'm going to do the bundles, but I don't actually know which day we did the colour block dress recently. Do you want to do the uh, the linens first? And then if we can... Sorry, I, I should have looked. Um, should we start with the stone, I think it is? Um, so this is your wash linen. 100% um, linen. Uh, this is what you get for your half metre. Again, we sell in the half metres and we say about putting in multiple units in. Um, it's a little bit, it's wider than your dressmaking fabric. I would say, not dressmaking, it's wider than your quilting weight. What, oh, which is it, Sorry. Oh, so it's 130 to 133 centimetres, so that little bit wider. Um, we say about buying units of fabric. One unit on our website is one half metre, so it's this. Uh, putting in your multiple units um, means like four units, two metres. Um, lots of places buying fabric online will cut a minimum of a metre. So to be able to do that half metre increment, I think is something quite special that we do. Um, so this uses a stone, really great colour. Um, if it's been hot weather like it is, or unpredictable weather like it is, Linen, lovely, isn't it? It's that traditional kind of holiday look. Um, and then you've got, is this lavender, this colour? This is what I want to call it. I love this colour. Maybe you are, um, I know that you've got a tote bag, cat. that's like a linen tote bag. I think there are, I'm going to, I think I'm meant to name three shops, but I'm just going to say one. Very toast-esque, these kind of linens. Um, if you looked at the price of things in the shop toast, it's very expensive. Um, it's quality, it's quality product. It should be expensive, but then you've got that opportunity to use a, another a quality linen to make your own. Um, so I think that's great. Oh, sorry. And then the blue denim is what they're calling it. It's obviously not a denim. It is a hundred percent washed linen. When we say washed, it's got that kind of texture to it. 
yeah, I think it, it feels, feels substantial. So I don't know if that's the right word. Um, they're just gorgeous colours. I, I do, I really like the tote bag that Kat's got, kind of a slouchy tote bag in the linen would be gorgeous. I think half a metre, maybe a metre if you want to do longer handles, I think would be gorgeous. And it is thinking about things in a different way. You might not think a dressmaking fabric, oh, I'm going to make a tote bag. But I don't know. We've got lots of guests coming on, and that's why, to share different inspiration. And hopefully, as we've seen Janice today, hopefully we'll be able to get a few more into the studio and working all around the social distancing so we can start, you know, learning some other tips and tricks. Right, Adele demoed the So Different pattern on the 16th of June um, of the colour block dress. So when I give you the when I give you the dates, that sounds like an order. Um, these dates are really useful to go onto our YouTube and look up the dress uh, making demo. Maybe you want to see the demo and then think about the, getting the bundle, or you want to buy the bundle and then watch it back. Having that kind of in the background chit chatter, or to be following the tips and tricks. Oh, right, so um, there is different variations of this colour block dress that you can do. Obviously, this is the full sleeve. Um, here on the back, you can see that there's like, um, it's a no sleeve option. I think that's the one she did on the demo. Um, we have then included the maximum amount of fabric you would use for the different variations. So you've got, we've got three denims in here, which again, I love denim. It's 100% cotton. It's just a different weave of cotton basically um what's good about these as well is although you're getting these three colorways don't forget that the reverse of your denim could also be used if you like that colorway instead so i think that's what uh, you know thinking thinking about things a little bit differently you've also got the reverse colorway of those denims as well if you didn't like as stark blue kind of denim maybe just an idea. Um, yeah, lovely denims. They're all eight ounce denim fabric. Uh, maybe use a slightly heavier weight needle when you are stitching with them because they are slightly heavier weight fabric. Jules's book talks all about different needles. Um, just so you know, I'm just gonna unplug the iron. I was like, I was literally stood there and the desk is hot. I was like, that's unusual. Um, the other bundle, what was that date again? I'm just so, 15th of June, 16th of June. <laughs> just a failure of a moment for me there. I don't think I listen. The presenters have to listen to me and I'm, you know. Again, three and a half meters of fabric. This one's more following that actual colorway on the back of the pattern there, um, which I think is gorgeous. Um, these are a cotton. So I think it's quite good for this dress because it has got stru structure. So these aren't floaty fabrics that they've used. And also there is a lot of bias. So you have your warp and your weft in the fabric. Going, the warp goes warp, and the weft goes left. That's how I remember. Not the, not the coolest. Yeah, the warp thread in your weave of your fabric is going up the fabric. And the weft, which is going across the fabric, um, and that's making up the weave that makes your fabric. If we talk about the bias, that is cutting diagonal. And that naturally, even if your fabric hasn't got a stretch to it, will cause your fabric to stretch. Um, that's why Quilter's talking about, I think, Y seams and the bias and things like that. It, it can, it's a slightly more difficult. You have biased seams on this dress. So having these structured fabrics is going to help you out further. Watching the demo is going to help you out further. It doesn't make it impossible. It doesn't make it, you know, something you're not going to be able to do. Just something to be aware of. And then we've kind of bundled together the kind of correct, correct, good fabrics for a good result, basically, in these bundles. Um, at size range of all of these, UK size is 8 to 26, US 4 to 22. And that's... Both them enough fabric to make largest sizes. Oh. Fantastic. Oh, cool. Um, Kat's just telling me what's going on. 
and I'm reacting on air and I'm meant to continue. I'm not. Sorry. Um, I'm going to do clapper. I'm not going to do a demo uh, because I've just turned the iron off. Um, traditional tailoring tool. Um, please tell me if I if you, you have any more information about it. Um, it's solid wood. Um, basically, if you have the steam on your iron, um, the wood absorbs that steam into it, making the crease in your fabric. Maybe you're doing a hem, you're doing uh, tucks, pleats, things like that. It um like cements the wrong crisp crisp. You have a very crisp finish to it. Therefore, you know Savile Row tailors traditionally want crisp finishes to things. It's more precise. Pressing is so important in anything we make. It's not just a finished article. Um, so that's great, and it, it looks good, doesn't it? I like it. Yeah. Oh, Rachel from uh, Rachel Magnolia. Rachel from Magnolia has messaged in. Oh, she said, I love books too. I do love books. Um, she says she's got the wedding dress book and it's brilliant. If you see any of Rachel's work, it's amazing. She makes so many different dresses. So um, I know she's on the fan page and I know she's on our page. So Rachel Magnolia, do have a look. She's amazing. Right. What? Oh, I've got last three minutes. Oh, sorry, I'm making a decision as I go. Right, pinking shears. Um, these are right-handed pinking shears. The actual, you'll know the, that jaggedy blade on them. There we go. Um, means that uh, when you cut through your fabric, the way it's cut means it, it's less likely to fray. It's probably the easiest and quickest way of finishing something. You know, we don't all have an overlooker, not all of us machines do an overcasting stitch. Sometimes it's just not appropriate. You're making a costume for a school play that's gonna be worn once. You don't necessarily need to spend that time on it. Um, it's also a decorative stitch. Maybe you're making dolls clothes with uh, the kids or they're doing it for the first time. Um, it means that that is gonna last without fraying, but it isn't, you know, it's probably that first step into your dressmaking. Um, it's still a finish that's quite decorative and it's a practical finish. I'm not going to cut anything. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, tip. I don't know if it works. But I heard uh, sharpening these, cutting through tinfoil. Discuss. I'm just going to leave it out there. Discuss. I, I've never tried it because obviously you can't put these in a scissor sharpener. Yes. Let's see tomorrow's menu. Um, tomorrow's show, uh, Debbie is in. Fantastic, you won't have to see me. 8 a.m. You've got applique tips. Um, 9 a.m. Luxury bag making with Debbie Shaw. At 10 a.m. Rombo fabrics, and then you've got a repeat, um, which you will see me again, un ugh, unfortunately. Um, of stash building bundles um, at 11, and then you've lovely repeat with our darling Janice. Um, of the girls skirt and blouse or the dunga skirt as I've named it um but yeah I hope you've enjoyed today's show if you've had the sound down at least you've looked on the web shop and had it up for Janice, Janice's demo but um you won't have to see me much um, hopefully Vicky's feeling better so I'm gonna bring her after the show um but thanks for sticking with us um do look at our website all the products for today's show thank you so much Comment on Facebook, let us know what you're doing. Bye.